All right, so I'm going to be showing how to open up and disassemble this uh, 2021 14-inch MacBook Pro model A2442. This is an M1 model. All right, um, we're going to be using a Pentalobe uh, 1.2 or P5 screwdriver to remove all the screws from the bottom. All right, if this video helps you out, please make sure to like, subscribe, share my channel with others so that they can learn how to upgrade and repair their devices as well. And if it helped you save a bunch of money, please consider contributing a little to the channel. Every little bit helps and allows me to continue making these videos for a living. The links and stuff, how you can do that, are in the description below. All right, you want to keep all the screws in order if you aren't already doing that. Um, the way I do it is I keep all the screws flat side down on my desk in the pattern I remove them. Okay, so basically I take the screws, I put them like that so they're standing up. Um, in the pattern I remove so four like that and then four here. Okay <clears throat> Even if they look exactly the same, it's always a good idea to make sure you put the same screw back where you got it um, But in this case, I mean these four are the same and I believe the four on the front are the same But again, you want to try and keep them in order Because sometimes there are like small differences that make them look the same, but it's not like exactly Okay So once we get all these screws off if I remember correctly, I think this model, you can actually just pop the entire cover off, but I might be wrong. Let me see here. So let's go on the back here and see, can we pull this up? No. Okay. So what we're going to do, we're going to go to the front where the MacBook opens. Okay. And what I, where'd my suction go? Oh, here we go. Okay. Thought I left it inside. So I'll use that and we'll pull up here. Okay. All right. Just like this. Okay, they spilled on this, so it's probably going to be stuck together, but we'll see. Okay, so I'm going to, once I got a gap in there, I'm sliding my fingernails along the inside to the outer edge, and I'm going to pull up here. Oh yeah, it's definitely stuck from the coffee. So we're going to go down the side and continue pulling and pull up here. Okay, well, that one's kind of stuck, so let's go ahead and continue over to this side. And we'll go ahead and pull this side up. So pull this up. Come on. There we go. Okay, then we'll go over to this side. I think I was thinking of the MacBook or something, not the Pro. There we go. Okay, so once you get everything, including the clip in the middle up, so you can see you can pull this up like that. I'm going to rotate this over. I'm going to grab on the inside on the side like this. So basically like that. Make sure I use my fingernails along the edge here on the inside so that way um, the sharp edges don't slice my fingers. But we're going to do that. I'm going to push down on the top here and slide it like that. I'm going to go over here and do the same thing. Get in there and push that down. Okay, that comes out just like this. And you can actually see the coffee that's spilled in here. So I'm going to have to like rinse this off and then dry it up. Hopefully this computer is going to work okay. It looks like most of it's already pretty dry, so they're probably going to be okay here. <clears throat> but um, I do want to clean it off. You can actually see there's all this coffee residue going all over the place. Okay, so somehow this MacBook is still working okay, but the keyboard keys are having some problems. So I'm going to first clean off the bottom piece. And basically, I'm just going to use some warm water and then dry this off completely. Um, I have a powerful air blower I use to dry it even more. Um, <clears throat> if you're just using like water and stuff and you don't have an air blower, you can also use some uh, isopropyl rubbing alcohol. But sometimes it can like dissolve some of the like foam stuff like these. So be a little bit careful with that. Okay, so I'm going to clean this up and I'll be back. All right, so I'm back. You can see the bottom cover is all nice and clean now super clean all right and what we're gonna do to clean the inside part here first thing we gotta do is disconnect the battery uh, let me double check here this design they changed it up a bit looks like the keyboard there battery 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 and it's i think underneath the touchpad trackpad connector all right i think i've only done one other of these so it's going to be a bit of figuring out here, okay? Not a T5, I think that's a T3. All right, let's zoom in here. Okay, so we're going to remove these screws from here using a T3, Torx 3 screwdriver. 
Again, keep all the screws in order because they are different size, shape, and lengths. There are going to be a lot of them, so if you get them mixed up, you're going to have a lot of trouble. Okay, so we got those two out. Once you get those two screws out, we should be able to remove this metal plate here. Okay, oh man, I think the coffee is like making it all stuck. So we're going to have to work with this, kind of wiggle this and peel it up. There we go. Okay, so here we go. There's the thing there. Do I need to rinse this? Uh, I think it should be okay. It's not bad. There's. What I'll do is I'll just get a paper towel. I got a bowl of like some warm water and I'm just going to kind of wet the paper towel a little bit. Okay, squeeze it so that no water is dripping off of it. We got this little thing of warm water on the paper towel and we're just going to wipe that off. Okay. All right. We'll set that aside. All right, next thing we're going to do, we're going to pop up this connector. I just get underneath with my fingernails and we pop it up just like that. Okay, here we go. Then we can go ahead and peel this connector back. Let's zoom out a little bit. Okay, it is held in with some adhesive, so be careful when you peel this back that you're not ripping anything up. Okay, they also have this piece here. Is that? It's weird. Okay, come on. So we're going to try and peel this up as well. Let me see what's going on here. <laughs> you got to be careful with this stuff because Apple likes to do some tricky stuff here. That will cause you to end up breaking things if you're not doing it properly. So look at that. There's that foam pad there. And this here. Okay this foam pad I don't know what that's attached to that's attached to some more stuff so we're gonna let's try and hold this part down and slowly carefully peel this back okay so there we go then we're gonna leave this alone okay we are going to have to take the trackpad out later all right we got this connector here that goes for the battery as well as this one so we're gonna lift this little plastic tab up okay we're gonna flip this latch to release it I don't know if you saw but this plastic latch at the end then we're gonna just grab this try and grab so you can pull straight back and then kind of wiggle and pull that and you can see we got this cable out okay again it's very important that you undid that latch you can't just yank on it or you'll end up damaging something but there you go that's what that connector looks like there's some coffee and stuff on here so I'm gonna just use a little bit of the water on the paper towel to kind of dry it or wipe it off. Basically it's dissolving the coffee back and then absorbing it into the paper towel. Okay, once we got that, we're going to carefully peel this back. You don't want to crease this if you can help it. So just carefully, I kind of try and pull it that way as I kind of pull it up. And then we have access to this. And usually this is a T5 or Torx 5 screw. But uh, let's see. Yeah, okay. Let's switch over to the T5 Torx 5. All right, we'll undo this screw here. Okay, now that we got that screw out, what we're going to do, we're going to lift up the battery connector here, so this tab. Um, we can also actually take this whole little thing out. So I'll use this to kind of lift this plastic tab up. Peel that back a little. All right, so once you peel that back, you can flip the latch up of this one. I just use my fingernail, okay? And then I'll flip that latch up. And then now that that latch is flipped up, we can grab this and pull straight back and you can see the cable comes out. All right, so we got this cable out. We'll set that aside. Okay. And again, try and keep track of how it was. So I try and keep everything in the pattern I removed it. All right, we're going to carefully get underneath here this metal tab and lift this up. So basically this disconnects the battery from the rest of the computer. So if you want, you can hold down here to kind of help and then just bend this up a little bit. And let me show you, if see if I can show you this. You can see how the battery connects. There's those three golden dots there and then those two square or rectangular pads 
and that's how it connects, okay? So the battery requires that little strip as well as this. If any of these aren't connected right, it's not gonna charge and it's not gonna work, okay? All right, next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna clean off the battery. Luckily, we don't have to take out the battery because the battery is held in with some adhesive and it's not gonna be easy to get out. And if you take it out, you're not gonna be able to put it back the same way. So we're gonna avoid taking that out. So we're using warm water on a piece of paper towel and we're just gonna kind of wipe this to clean it off, okay? So just wipe that up. And the reason why, um, you can see I only put a little bit of water and then this is dry. After I do it, I kind of squeeze it to make sure there's no dripping water. You don't want water dripping around inside your computer. Okay, and one other thing to do, which I didn't do yet, um, gotta be very careful, but after disconnecting the batteries, and you wanna open up the computer and then press and hold the power button, this one, for at least 15 seconds to drain any residual power. This makes it a lot safer to work on, all right? Especially since we're disassembling everything, it's very important. So I'm gonna hold it for a little bit longer than 15 seconds, but uh, we'll do that. Okay. All right. So I've already held it for several seconds now. Then we're gonna go ahead and continue cleaning this stuff off, okay? You can actually see all this streaked on coffee stuff. Okay, you don't want to put too much pressure on these parts because these aren't like solid covers. All right, I'm gonna get a little more water, squeeze it out to clean it up and just continue wiping. Dry that off. All right, same thing, we'll wipe this. Again, we are going to take the motherboard logic board out completely from here to make sure there's no liquid residue or damage underneath. But for now, everything seems to be just on the top here. So that's a good thing. All right, try and wipe this off. Kind of dried into like a solid lump here. So it might take a bit of wiping. You can see the paper towels getting discolored now. I'm gonna fold it over to a cleaner spot and then we'll continue wiping. Okay, and just keep clean all this stuff off. All right. And sometimes if it's really bad, you can actually use like warm water, running warm water in the faucet, and you can use that to clean off the board, but you do wanna make sure to do that battery drain. All right. Wow, this stuff is like, all over. It's pretty bad. I'm probably going to use a new paper towel so I don't have to dunk this back in the water and then dirty all the water. Okay. Alright, we're going to move down to here. Keep cleaning. Basically, we're just diluting off the coffee. Okay. Until it's all until it's diluted so much you can't even tell anymore. But uh, in some cases, it does leave some permanent marks, so keep that in mind, it might not all come out. Okay, be careful with this cable here. You don't wanna damage that or your speaker's not gonna work. Okay. Now if you look at it, it's a lot better. Let me zoom out here a bit. Okay, this corner needs to dry a bit more, but other than that, you can see as it dries up, it's becoming invisible. Okay, so I'm gonna get another piece of paper towel. Move some stuff aside here. Okay, and I'm gonna have to also respond to some messages in a bit, but okay. Again, you don't want a lot of water. Make sure to squeeze it so that it doesn't drip. You don't want water to accidentally drip into the computer. If you want, you can actually just wet a little bit of it, leave a dry spot, and then you can kind of pinch it all into itself and any excess water should kind of spread out into the dry part, okay? Okay, you can see it's much, much better now. There's a little bit of driplets here, so we're gonna kind of clean that as well.
everything right. Also, the metal part portion here has some, uh, but we'll do that after we get everything else out here. Okay, I am going to have to check my messages real soon because people are messaging me. Alright, you can see how much better it is now. There was some like under here, so probably need to also get underneath the rubber piece and get that there as well. Okay, it's actually really good now. All right, so now if you were to look at this, it's already very difficult to tell that anything spilled inside here, but we are going to have to go again over these edges, like I said. Okay, these edges usually like to collect gross stuff. Look at that. I'm gonna fold it over and continue wiping. Then also this little flat area here. Should I clean that up? All right, we'll continue going along this inner edge here. This stuff gets really gross, as you can see. So continue wiping. Ow. I hate these sharp edges. All right, keep going. Wipe up the flat edge as well here. Okay, continue working our way up. in there. Ew, look at that. Look how gross that is. Okay, I'm gonna rotate this and we're gonna work on this. Little bits of paper towel are coming off. Let's get that out. Okay. I'm going to fold it to a cleaner spot now because it's getting all gross. And continue cleaning. Alright. For the most part, it looks really good now. Is this water? Oh, yeah, that's water. Okay. Oh, this looks like it might be still. Okay, and also Apple a lot of times they put stuff now so if you use isopropyl rubbing alcohol it'll dissolve off like the lettering and things so be careful with that. Okay, oh there's still some here I didn't notice I need to clean that. This was just like keyboard or another cable on top of it. it was coffee residue. Clean that all up. Okay. I also have this little portable air blower I can use. Okay, there it looks like there's a dark spot there. I'm gonna get off. Good. And as we dry it, it gets even better. Okay, let's see. Oh, we got some hidden underneath here. Okay, make sure to clean that off. The back of this is actually really sticky, so I'm going to have to clean that. Okay, good. I'm going to clean this one. Probably that foam pad I need to soak in the water to make sure to get off any residue it might have soaked up. Oh yeah. Okay, I'm gonna get another clean piece of paper. Dip it in the water again, squeeze out any excess. 
All right, and I'll clean this up some more. Okay. Make sure to try that. Alright, I'm going to dip this thing, this metal plate, in warm water to try and clean it out as well. Okay, and then I'm going to just squeeze it in a dry paper towel. And you can see actually it's leaving behind some brownish colored stuff. So, some coffee did stain in, or get absorbed into there. Yeah, okay, well... Probably about as good as we're gonna get that so we'll set that aside all right now let's take a close look so just from the top so far everything looks okay this I don't know if that's just the material the way the material yeah it's just the way the material kind of reflects the light because from here it looks perfectly good everything else looks good here luckily it doesn't seem like it was a crazy amount of coffee oh there's some under in this corner here that I'm gonna have to work at um, but again this kind of thing we're gonna disassemble the whole thing so we'll get to that once we get all of that apart okay give me a second I need to check some messages and I'll be back okay all right, I'm back. Let's go ahead and see what else we got to do. So let's go ahead and actually remove the trackpad or touchpad, whatever you want to call it. Uh, I believe we got to use a T5, Torx 5 for that. You want to be careful when removing this because there are little washers on the bottom. And if you just kind of shake it around or move it too quick, those washers are going to go flying. So we're going to slowly, carefully take these screws well the screws you can take out fast if you want but once we get all the screws out to remove the thing you'll see what I mean okay um, after I finish taking this out and making sure it's good I am going to just put it back right away I'm not gonna leave this out okay so there's four going down the sides there's two going down the bottom middle here All right, 10 screws total. Um, I'm not sure if they put one in the middle. Usually they don't, but there is one screw right there. So I'm assuming that's just for the battery. Um, but yeah, I'm pretty sure it's not holding the trackpad, but we'll find out, okay? So last screw here. Okay, so now we've got all the screws out. Let's carefully open this up and I'm going to get my hand underneath here. Let's see, we're going to move this cable back and can we drop this down? There might be coffee holding it in place. Yeah, we can carefully pull this back. Yep, there was some coffee holding it. And carefully pull this out. So here you can see what the touchpad trackpad looks like. It does look like some coffee did get under there. And here, okay, and this one actually the washer got taken away because of the coffee and then there's two little washers here so we're gonna flip this over get those washers off okay be careful make sure you don't lose them okay we got two of the small ones we got one of the long ones and then two of the long ones are stuck on here because of the coffee so I gotta pull that off I am gonna dunk it in the warm water and I'll get them out later okay so we got that one and this one man this one's like really stuck on there okay so we're gonna have to clean this out and hopefully it's not gonna get any damage it did seem to work okay so hopefully it's not gonna have any problems we're gonna flip this over and we're gonna take a look at the other side <coughs> there's some coffee in here and here's the washer that's stuck right there so we gotta get that out all right we'll throw that in the water Okay, I'm going to get some warm water again on a piece of paper towel, squeeze out the excess, and then we're going to have to 
wipe this stuff up. So we'll clean this off. Make sure there's no coffee here. Okay. Clean that all up. Okay, bottom as well. Look at that. There's a lot of coffee in this. Oh man. I'm worried about the keyboard part because a lot of their keys are kind of sticky as well. And a lot of them are like the special keys that are difficult to remove. So I'm a little worried the whole keyboard might end up needing to be replaced, but we'll find out. Hopefully not. Okay, so we got that. I'm going to get a new paper towel because that got gross already. Okay. I guess I need to move some stuff out of the way. Okay. This, we can get some more warm water on it. Okay. Without the excess. Alright. Continue cleaning this again. It's very important you squeeze out the excess because when you wipe stuff like this and you get the gaps, you don't want it to squeegee out water into the components. Okay. We're using the dry side now. Clean that up. You can see they made this. This thing gets kind of comes out easily. So this piece, um, if you used isopropyl alcohol, it would just all rub off completely, I think. All right, we're gonna flip this over. Let's actually clean this a little bit because this also has some gross stuff on it. Okay, we'll flip this back over here. Okay, and I'm probably gonna have to check messages. Let's actually move this aside real quick because we do have to clean off the touchpad trackpad real quick because this has a lot of stuff on it. So I'm going to zoom in. Okay. Oh, I got some more messages. Give me a second. All right, I'm back. Let's go ahead and clean this stuff off. So got all this residue here. Got to clean all that. Okay. Clean all around these raised screw mounts. Okay. Be careful with these cables here. They can be a little fragile. You don't want to get caught on them and then tear something up. Okay, clean that off as well. Alright, it's good. Pretty good. Let's go ahead and clean all of this. This one's going to be tough here. I need more water. Okay. And around this little area here. Okay. The touchpad, you want to be very careful because if you get water in between, in between it and stuff, it's not going to function properly. Okay. So this one's kind of very fragile. You gotta be very careful. Okay. I think the lucky part is this I think these parts aren't too pricey, the touchpad if I remember correctly. So if you for some reason need to replace it, I think you'll be okay. Alright. Alright. Looks good. I gotta make sure when it dries it's still good as it looks good as well. I'm gonna get a new piece of paper towel so that I can clean it out with cleaner water. Okay. Make sure it doesn't leave behind residue. Oop. See, I accidentally folded up this one a little bit, so you gotta be careful with that. Get back over there. Okay. I'm pretty sure Apple designed this like that on purpose so you accidentally break it. <laughs> because there's no way that's required to be shaped like that. 
Okay. Let me show you what I mean. You can see this cable here. Like, there's no way it needs to zigzag twirl around like that. They could have just one way like that. <laughs> We are good. Alright, we don't need to clean off the adhesive residue because that's meant to be there. Alright, so now we got to get the little washers back in place. Put this back in the computer. Okay, I gotta be careful here. Alright, so we got one there. Oops, sorry, we got one of those there. And then again, we have two of these round ones. I'm going to use my screwdriver that's a little bit magnetic to help get that in place. One there. One there. Okay. And then we got the other three washer ones that I need to get out. Okay, let me make sure to dry them off. I don't think these really will have any issues if you actually lose them um, other than maybe Apple knowing you opened it I don't think they really serve a purpose so I don't know I could be wrong I've never put it back um, without them just to check but uh, I don't see how they would really do much okay so we got those all right so we got those in there we're gonna now put this back into the rest of the MacBook. Okay, so we got this. Put that aside. Okay, we're gonna open it up slightly. And I actually have another computer I need to work on real quick, so I might have to do that one first, because that one, they said they need to pick it up tonight. So I'm gonna put this touchpad trackpad in, and then I'm gonna stop here uh, you probably won't really see much of a stop because I'm going to edit it, stitch it all together. But uh, let me go ahead and get these screws back in. Okay. So for this, it's not going to go in like completely straight. So we're going to have to use some tape to align it. Um, but first what we're going to do uh, is get these screws in there just to be placeholders to stay in place for a little bit. Okay. So that way the washers don't like fall out. All right. And these will help hold it in place. All right. Okay, so after I tighten it in, I just undo it a couple turns. So basically like that, and then undo it a bit. So you can see it can actually move around in place. All right. And that's why we need to align it. So now that I got enough screws that it will stay in place on its own, we're gonna tighten them all in and then undo it a little bit. All right, and we'll just do the same with all the rest. Bring my scissors back. I think I left my scissors in the house. So I'm going to have to get those. All the touchpad trickpad screws back in we are going to have to now get some tape to align it there's some black stuff here I don't that's not coffee I don't know what that is but let me see if I can wipe off this I think this part is coffee yep yeah I don't know what this black stuff here is I don't think that's even gonna wipe off oh, actually it's wiping off but I don't think it's coffee what is that that better not be it might be some like apple security thing so they know you wiped it <laughs> i don't know i don't know 
All right, well, actually, it's brown like the coffee, so maybe it is coffee, and it just looked really black. Okay, all right, I'm going to go get my scissors, and I'll be back. Um, I'm going to actually work on another computer, but you'll see me come back to work on the same one. All right, see you guys in a bit. All right, so let's continue this MacBook coffee spill cleanup repair. Okay, this is all dry it on the outside for now okay so we were working on the trackpad earlier um, if you're wondering the battery model number is a2519 so they have right there a2519 all right anyways let's go ahead and secure the trackpad centered okay so make sure to be careful with the cable I'm holding it in place while I put it down all right then we're gonna go ahead and open up the MacBook okay so what we got to do, you can see the trackpad can move around. We got to center this. We're going to need some tape. Um, so I have tape and scissors here. But basically, we're going to just use two pieces of tape. And then we're going to use that to secure the thing in place. So what I'll do, I'll peel up a piece of tape here. Okay. And then there's a little bit of a trick here to make it easier. Uh, what you do, take the piece of tape. We're gonna fold this over the edge just like that so we have a tab to peel it up easily. Okay, and then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut this piece of tape in half. It doesn't need to be 100% centered. And then we're gonna use this piece of tape just to maneuver this around. All right, we're gonna use it the long way like this. So I'll stick half of it onto the actual touchpad, trackpad, and you can see we can use this to kind of move it around. Okay, so kind of get it as centered as you can. It's a little bit tricky doing this because I'm looking at it at an angle. So you kind of want to look at it from top down. All right. But uh, that does look good. I mean, usually people will be sitting um, in front of their laptop, not looking straight over the top. So you don't need to get it completely centered. You can get it more so that when you're looking at it at this angle, it looks like the gap is even. Um, but yeah, you can tilt it up, make sure it looks okay. And I think that actually looks good. Okay, so now that we got that pretty much centered, we're going to close the screen, flip this back over, and obviously put the screws back into place. Okay, all right, so we're going to make sure, switch back to the T5, Torx 5, right? All right, and we'll tighten these back down. All right, so usually it's best to go at like the corners like this, so that one then that one and then we'll do this top corner and then this bottom corner and now that we got all those in it shouldn't be able to sift, uh, shift around like you can see if I try and wiggle it it stays in place so now we can go ahead now and just tighten down all the rest of the screws okay and we should be good to go as far as the touchpad trackpad goes all right the part that I'm kind of dreading is popping out the keyboard keys because the keyboard keys tend to be a little tricky to get out. I might have to go find um, a what you would call it a safety pin or a needle to do this. I think a safety pin's good because it's kind of designed to be flexible. I don't know if I have one though. I'll have to look for one. Okay, so we're gonna now start removing all the keyboard stuff. This looks like it might be a larger, yeah. So, okay, we've got lots of little pieces to remove here. Um, let's go ahead and start. So we'll remove these two pieces first and see if those come out, okay? All right. Also, if you're wondering, I don't know what needs to be removed and everything right off the top of my head. It's more, I just, go as I go I figure it out okay so we're gonna get that out again hopefully you did the power drain so this piece looks like it comes out but it's kind of stuck there come on am I really gonna have to remove this bar first <laughs> it looks like I'm gonna have to remove that bar first all right well let's go ahead and remove these screws as well okay and again, this, this piece probably isn't going to come out because we probably have to remove that wireless antenna bar first. Okay, yeah, as you can see, this doesn't want to come out. Okay, so let's see what we got to remove to get that wireless antenna bar out. Okay, 
So it looks like there's a screw here. Got these screws that we're going to remove as well. Okay. Again, keep all the screws in order because they are different size, shape, and lengths. And you don't want to mix them up and then cause damage to the computer that way. Okay. Get those two out. Does this metal plate come off? No. Okay. Let me get this screw out. This screw out. Apple's just making things more and more difficult. All right, we've got another screw over here. Okay. There we go. Let's see what else. All right, let's go ahead and remove these, but these are most likely T3s, yep. So we'll switch back over to the T3, or Torx 3 screwdriver, and we'll remove these. Okay. It's a lot of screws, so hopefully you guys are able to keep track of all the screws you're removing. All right. Also, I'm not even sure if there's any liquid underneath here, so we might be removing this for nothing. But I mean, it's best to be sure. Okay, so we'll get those two out. Okay, so we've got those out. Now we'll remove this metal plate. I am going to have to respond to some messages soon. Um, you can see this one has two connectors underneath and this one has one. I will zoom in in a bit to remove those, but uh, let's go ahead and continue. We're going to have to remove the wireless antenna bar as well. Okay, also using the T3 or Torx 3. Okay, man, this is a lot of screws. Okay, get this metal plate off as well. They do have little foam pads underneath them, so yeah, hopefully those remain intact. We've got this screw as well. Okay, then to remove this, uh, you basically go from the tail end and pop them up. Let me actually zoom in here. I had to cut one of my fingernails because I broke it prying stuff up. But uh, basically get underneath from the tail and just pop it up just like that. Okay, and there you go. We've got the antenna connectors all popped up. All right, and you can see this actually moves around. Okay, here you can see the connectors for the screen and stuff. So I'm going to use my fair nails and pop those up just like this. Okay, one big one here. All right, there we go. And what else? Are there hidden screws that I need to worry about? Okay, we got these tiny screws here, here, and here. Um, those are P2 or Pentalobe 0 0.8 screws. So we're going to remove those as well. Okay, looks like three, three, and three. So six screws total. I'm going to zoom out here so I can kind of get it all in view at the same time. All right, and we're going to get those six screws out. It's a lot of screws. Hopefully you guys are able to remember where everything went. Again, putting it in the pattern you removed them is the best way to do that. I can smell the coffee in there. <laughs> okay, I'm going to have to respond to some messages. So let me remove these last three screws and then I'll be back. There we go. Okay, give me a second, I'll be back. All right, so I'm back and got all those screws out. I think that's all of them. Let's see if we can go ahead and pop this out. Oh, actually it's comes out pretty easily it feels. So we're gonna kind of wiggle this and pull this up. And there we go. Very nice um, and easy to remove, all right? I just don't like how they 
use all different size screws to make this work. I feel like they could have easily at least kept the same design on top. All right, so we got these cables here that are loose. Looks like the cables go into this. All right, these metal plates should be able to come out now, I hope. <laughs> okay, you gotta pull them and wiggle them, and then there we go, we can get this out. We're gonna set that aside, okay. Hopefully we got all the screws in the right places out. Okay, then we're gonna get this. Man, it's so difficult to get this out. And also having no fingernail here makes it even more difficult. There we go, slide that forward and then grab that up. There we go. I'll set that aside, okay. Let's see, what else do we got? So, these cables should lift up, it looks like, but they do seem stuck a bit, but there we go. Okay, so you can see we can lift this out. Be very careful, I'm getting my fingernail under here and lifting this out. And then there are these little pads here that seem like they might fall out, so you wanna grab these and move them aside. They have little pegs that hold them in place, okay. So we're gonna set that aside. Okay, both sides have these, and there's, yeah, little pegs under both. Okay, so we'll move that aside. So far, the cabling under here looks clean, which is good, good sign. Okay, I'm gonna use this to kind of blow some of the dust out, because why not, since we got it open, get the dust out. Okay. Now we've got a bunch of other stuff to remove. I don't think we need to really take the screen out, but uh, maybe we should just to be safe. Okay. We got this little cable here. The other side has the same looking, similar looking bracket, but it doesn't look like anything is. Oh, okay. This is actually for the um, uh, touch ID power button sensor thing. Okay. Um, and this one, I'm not too sure what it's for, but it's going up into here. So we're going to take that out. Oops, I need to switch back over. I had the P2. We're going to switch back over to the um, T3 or Torx 3 screwdriver. Okay, again, this is a lot of screws, so hopefully you're going to be able to keep track of all of them. I don't know, it's, it's, getting, it's getting to be a huge pile of screw mess over here. <laughs> Okay, so we got that one, got this one. All right, then we can remove this metal plate. And underneath we have another connector here, just get underneath and pop it up. Again, I just use my fingernail for that so I can feel what I'm actually doing. Okay, wow, that's stuck pretty strong. There we go. Okay, so we got those out. Now we should be able to remove the screen. The best way to do this is you actually open the screen all the way. Oh, we can also take this tape off since we tightened the touch pad already in place. Okay, so let's peel this tape off. I don't need that there. Okay, so the best way to remove the screen is you open it completely. Um, as far as it goes, go gently, don't, make, don't bend or damage the hinges. Okay, we're going to zoom out here so you can see. Also got another bowl of warm water here, but basically you have, what I do is I hang the screen over the edge of my desk. So, okay, so the screen is over here hanging over the edge of my desk. Um, we're going to now switch over to a T8 or Torx 8 screwdriver. And we're going to remove these, assuming they didn't change it, right? Is it a T9 now? It looks kind of wobbly. Wow, it actually might be a T9 now instead of a T8. What about a T10? Still a little bit wobbly. No, okay. So T10, we're gonna use a, sorry, a T9, Torx 9 screwdriver, and we're gonna remove these screws here, okay? So there's three on each side. Um, if you don't, for some reason, have a T9 or Torx 9 screwdriver, I would recommend that you actually go and get one. Um, but if you, can't you might be able to get away with a t8 or torx 8 
But if you're gonna use a T8 or Torx 8, make sure that your screwdriver isn't um, skipping inside the screw because you don't wanna accidentally strip it out and then you'll be stuck with the thing forever, okay? Technically, you can use a screw extractor to get it out if you damage it, but yeah, you don't wanna damage the screws, okay? one here okay so once you get all the screws out I'm actually kind of holding it up with my legs but uh, you can let the screen now drop to 90 degrees and then that will rotate these hinges upwards and should allow you to kind of lift this out so we're gonna carefully lift this up and out just like that and also, this little piece, um, you can transfer it to a new screen. So if the new screen doesn't have it, it looks like you would need a P2 or Pentalobe 0.8 screwdriver to remove that. And you can transfer that to a new screen. Okay, um, I'm not too sure what it does, but it looks like it attaches to the side here. It might be like a Hall effect sensor, something that detects the position of the screen. Um, maybe Apple put that there so if you get a replacement screen it might not work right or if you don't put transfer that over then it's definitely not gonna work right all right so we got the screen out oh I can hear the crunchiness of the keys okay so let me actually check that real quick because if it's a lot of keys it's gonna be okay so f9 is kind of bad f10 is really bad it sticks in there Okay, F9, F10, 7 is a little bit, these ones aren't too bad, um, This, these two are pretty bad, but uh, over time it kind of breaks up, but the sugar stuff, steer B things will kind of stay there, Y key is also bad, O, P, so a lot of them are kind of crunchy, the enter key is really, really bad. Hopefully the keys actually physically work. Like hopefully this whole row down here is also bad. So we're gonna have to end up taking out a lot of these keys, almost probably disassembling the whole thing. Um, I think I underquoted the customer. I'm probably gonna have to <laughs> requote them on that because that's a lot of keys that, that are gonna need repairing. But anyways, we'll zoom out or zoom back in a little bit. Oops, too much. And yeah, all right, let me check some messages again and I'll be back. All right, so I'm back. Let's go ahead and continue disconnecting all this stuff. There's a lot of things going on here. So yeah, all right. We got these two corner screws here um, and it looks like they decided to go smaller here. Is this a T8? No, is that like a T7 or six? It looks like a T6. All right, yeah, so this is a T6 or Torx 6 screwdriver, screw, sorry. We're going to remove that. All right, now we got a lot of screws going along, so I'm going to start putting them in that order. Let me see here. Hopefully, we'll be able to get them all. So we got one there. Then we're going across. We got these two here. I think these are T3 or Torx 3. So we'll remove those. Okay, there's a lot of screws, my goodness, and all these little connectors, okay, so we got those two out, we'll get this metal plate off, again, it does have like a little foam or rubbery thing under there, okay, same thing, there's the connector here, um, this one is also held in with adhesive right there, so it's not going to come out easily if when we go to lift the motherboard up but you have to be very careful with this because if you damage this the touchpad connector or sorry the touch id sensor is linked to this specific macbook and if you damage that um, you're basically not going to have touch id anymore there's no way to get it back as far as i know okay so we're going to use a small little thin tool to get underneath and we're just going to try and push it under to lift up the adhesive here and carefully, there we go, okay. And when you lift the motherboard logic board out, you wanna be very careful you don't accidentally tear that, okay? So be very careful, it's like, 
easy to forget because it's in the middle of nowhere. Okay, and I'm going to go across from left to right. Um, so that way it's easier for me to remember where things came from. Okay, so we got this here. I'm going to take that out as well. Again, using the T6 or Torx 6 screwdriver. It was held in really strong. Get that out. All right, we're going to go to these little ones here. The T3 or Torx 3. Remove those two. Okay, I'm going to run out of space to put these screws, I'm sure, because there's a lot. All right, there we go. We'll remove those. Oops. Sorry, I'm trying to arrange all the screws properly so I can keep track of them. Then we'll remove the metal plate. Again, there's a little foam pad on there. Set that aside. Same thing. We'll go ahead and pop this up just like that. Okay, I don't know if I'm going to remove all these little things on the side. We'll find out. Um, actually, I might have to because coffee might have gotten in there. So we'll see. All right, is this one a T6 or is it something else? Let's see. That's a T5. So for some reason, just those corners, they use the T6. Yeah, I think everything else is T5, right? Yeah. So for some reason, only those top corners, they use T6 Torx 6 screws. All right, we're going to go ahead and remove this metal plate. Okay. I'm going to move the wireless antennas out of my way. Alright, so we've got these three we're going to remove. Okay. Alright, so we've got those three out. And you might be able to replace the charge ports. Okay, we'll set that metal plate aside. You might be able to replace these without taking the whole motherboard out, but we'll find out, right? I'm gonna actually be taking the whole motherboard out first. So I'll get under here, same thing with my fingernails, and pop those connectors up, all right? Just like that. And these connectors, they're kind of stiff. When you bend them up, they actually like hold their position, as you can see. Pretty interesting. Okay, we're gonna now switch over to the um, T5 or Torx 5. We're gonna remove this screw here. Okay, set that aside. All right, we're gonna go all the way across again, and then we got another T5 screw or Torx 5 screw here. So we'll remove that as well. Okay, all right, and then we got another metal plate here for this USB-C port with the T3 or Torx 3 screws. Okay, get those two out, and then remove the metal plate. Yeah, it's much harder to, to do this without fingernails. I don't know how people work on this without fingernails it's really annoying you'd probably have to use like the tweezers all the time which is gonna be annoying <laughs> anyways we've got that out we're gonna have to pop this connector out same thing I just use my fingernail and pull it up and then we can kind of pull this back like that okay we got the we're gonna work our way down here and we're gonna remove that t5 screw I believe oh actually is that a t6 Or T... No? Are you kidding me? Is that like a T... 9? Or T8? No, it's not a T8. Is it a T7? No? Okay, I guess it's a T6. Alright. Apple's now implementing more sizes of screws to screw with you, all right? So, there we go. Gotta switch all over the place, very annoying. Get that screw out and set that aside. All right, I think these pegs are removable. The ones 
um, for the clips, but I'm going to leave them alone. I think they are T5. No. I don't know what size they are. T3? They're like a T4. But anyways, I'm going to leave those alone. Okay. We're going to we remove that one. We're going to go across again. And we're going to remove this one now. Is this a different size? I hate Apple. Okay, we're going to switch over to T5 or Torx 5. And remove that one, I think, right? Yep. Okay. All right, sorry, I'm rearranging stuff. All right, now we got the T3 Torx 3 again. We've got to remove these two since I didn't remove that earlier. Okay, we'll remove this metal plate. And then we'll pop that connector up as well. Okay. I put these dumb raised metal things here so it's harder to even pop these up as well. But there we go. This is for the headphone jack. All right, we're going to go ahead and kind of pop that out of the way as well. Okay, what else do we got? There's a whole bunch of connectors we're going to have to remove. Um, I believe these two things are solid state memory. There's another area here for ones with more storage. Okay. All right, so I guess we're working now on the bottom ones down here. What size is that? Are they going to be annoying and switch it up on me again? I think it's a T6. This is Torque 6. No, no, it's a T5. But for some reason, the T5 screwdriver is very wobbly. Let me try one other thing here real quick. Yeah, it's a T5. But for some reason, it's very wobbly in there. So be very careful. Make sure you get a good grip on the screw when you undo this one. Okay, got that one. Go across. Is this also T5? There's another screw here. I don't know why these are like so wobbly feeling, but okay, looks like T5 works. I'll go across. We got another one right here. Okay, and then one last one in this corner. And I think that's all the screws we need to get the logic board, motherboard out. Okay. All right. So now we're going to have to make sure we disconnect all the cables. So we'll run a, um, along top to bottom, left to right. I think we got all of those out. Okay, we do need to remove the one down here. So this has a little plastic tab that we do need to peel up. So peel that up out of the way. Okay. All right, once you peel that up, you can flip this latch, all right, just like that. And then we should be able to pull this out. And that looks like a microphone cable because underneath I do see like a microphone down there. It looks like a microphone. All right, we're gonna work our way across to the left again. And I think we don't have anything else. Oh, we do have the fans. So let's actually disconnect the fans. So you have these little plastic tabs. It'll help to use something like this, especially if you don't have fingernails. I'm gonna lift it up, grab that tab, peel it back, flip that latch up, okay? And then we're gonna go ahead and pull that connector out. Um, these connectors are held down with adhesive, so it's annoying. You do need to get something underneath to kind of pry it up and peel it up. 
So there we go, just like that. You can see how I kind of wiggled it to get that out. And then we can go ahead and wiggle and pull that connector out. And these connectors are also gonna be a pain in the butt because we do have to get them to go through this when we lower the um, uh, logic board, motherboard back down. All right, we got another one over here. Same thing for the other fan. Peel that up, again, flip that latch up. Okay. And then same thing, get underneath this. Make sure you're getting underneath. And just wiggle, there we go. And then once you get that lifted off the board, you can go ahead and wiggle and pull that back. There we go. Okay, give me a second, I need to check my messages again. All right, so I'm back. Let's go ahead and continue taking a look. I think we got left now are just the speakers, the keyboard, and whatever that little thing is. So we're gonna get underneath here. Peel that up, all right, so same thing. Peel that up, flip that latch, and then pull that back. All right, disconnect the speaker. The speakers, um, how are they held in place? Looks most likely adhesive, because I don't see any screws or any other way they could be held in there. So the speakers gotta be held in place with <laughs> adhesive. All right, we're gonna go across. We got these two here, and oh, I guess we got, actually, no, we don't. This is part of the motherboard. We're not taking this out, okay? So make sure you don't try and peel that off. <laughs> okay, we're gonna go ahead and peel this up. Okay. All right, once we got that peeled up, we can flip this latch back and then we can go ahead and pull this connector out here we go all right we got this we're going to flip this latch up and pull that connector out all right then last one before peeling out the motherboard i'm going to peel out this last speaker uh, connector okay then flip this latch up and then we can go ahead and peel this out wiggle and pull there we go. Okay, we'll pull this back a little. Let's go ahead and zoom out now and pull the motherboard out. So, um, again, this is gonna be very tricky because there's a lot of connectors and putting it back is gonna be even worse. So make sure you watch this whole thing before attempting it because it's not gonna be fun. <laughs> All right, anyways, we're gonna go back here. You can see we can kind of lift the motherboard up. We're gonna make sure these cables get out of the way slowly lift this up oh make sure these aren't held in with adhesive as well okay looks like they're fine okay how are we going to get this out let's see i don't have my fingernails here to help with this now so it's going to be a pain let's see are there anything are there any pieces i'm missing let's try and start from the left since my fingernails are worn down or is this oh this is actually stuck down there it seems so are there any hidden screws I'm missing? I do see a couple screws here, but those seem like they're not attached to the motherboard, so we should be okay. All right, so we do have to somehow pop up from this side, okay? And as you can see, the fans actually stay attached at the bottom. They don't move anywhere. Are they hiding some screws here somewhere under these pads? Are you kidding me? Okay, so they're hiding some screws underneath these. I'm gonna carefully peel them up. Okay, more ways Apple tries to screw you over. Okay, so we've got these. I guess I could technically leave them attached and just kind of lift up an edge so they have these little thingies I'm not sure why they cover these specific screws but uh they did cover four of them I think right yeah four okay so those are probably going to be t5 or torx 5 screws so we're gonna get underneath and get those screws out okay so we'll get that screw out you can see you can hold that up aside and then do that Okay, this one up, peel that. 
it's being a pain. I'm gonna have to use this little tool to help poke the adhesive off of it because some of the adhesive is on top of the screw on this one. So, scrape the adhesive off of it. Good, all right, now while holding it out of the way, we'll just get that screw out. Apple's being sneaky here. They have no reason to cover those except to screw you over. Okay. I'm going to get this one out as well. Same thing. Lift this up. Okay. Peel that up. All right. And then we'll get that screw out. Okay. All right. Then we got one more up here. Pretty well camouflaged. Peel that up. Again, this is just how Apple knows that you opened it. I don't think there's any other purpose for that. Okay, hold that up, and we'll get that screw out. There we go. Okay, so now I think we got all the screws out. Hopefully there's no more hidden ones. All right, let's see if we can lift it up now. Okay, it's much more wobbly, so I think we can. So pull all these cables back as we lift. Okay, go towards the center here. Oh, I have no fingernail there, it makes it difficult. I'm using my middle finger. Okay, we're gonna carefully move the fan cable out of the way. You can see as we lift this, the rubber piece is going out here. So you do need to move the rubber piece out of the way. Carefully work your way over, slowly wiggling. Okay, again, the hardest part is going to be putting this thing back because all these cables need to end up back on top. Carefully wiggle this, all right? Make sure this is out of the way. Again, make sure no cables are getting caught. Make sure you're not accidentally getting that rubber thing ripped out. Continue working your way over. I'm holding over here now. Carefully wiggling this. Again, make sure you don't damage this cable as well. Okay, slowly, carefully move that rubber piece out of the way. We're gonna rotate it up here. Slowly continuing to work our way out. This rubber piece is in the way along with this fingerprint sensor. Kind of push that up out of the way. Kind of wiggle it a bit more. Again, you wanna go slow. Make sure you're not using any force to try and rip this thing out. Carefully, carefully, slowly rotate and here we go okay so we got the entire motherboard logic board out there is some coffee residue under here so I guess it's a good thing we did take this out if you do need to redo the thermal paste for some reason the screws are back here you can see there's the four screws and I'm pretty sure it will just fly out these metal things Apple's known for just putting these metal bars that will just fly off they are not attached to the motherboard I don't think all right, there's more uh, SSD memory here. So they do have room for more memory here and more memory here, so. All right, let's take a look. Inside these ports, they look okay, just dusty. So I'm gonna use this air blower to kind of clean it out. Okay, I'm gonna rotate this. Yeah, it's a little bit dusty, but other than that, other than that little bit of, oh wait, there's more spill here. Okay, nothing too bad actually. All right, let's see. Okay, so I'm gonna carefully put this down, be very careful with this. All right, and we need more paper towel. All right, and then we're gonna have to get that dry this off okay so 
we're gonna now clean off this coffee spill oh, make sure you don't bend this down because then when you put it back it's gonna make contact and then connect right away we can clean this off As you can see from this tab, it actually only uses the two. It doesn't use those three other little dots that are there, so I'm not sure what those are for. Okay, so we cleaned off that smudge there. All right, clean that off as you can see. We're gonna now work on this one, which is a, quite a bit more Hopefully it will clean off okay. Again, it helps to use warm water for this. And depending on what you're cleaning, um, if it gets underneath all the little components, you wanna make sure it's completely dry. Um, again, I use isopropyl alcohol if I need to. Um, in this case, I don't think I will. I just have to use air to dry it because it's not going underneath any components. So we're just gonna keep cleaning this until we can get that smudge out completely. Okay, you can see it's almost completely gone. We just need to, I'll do one more just to make sure. Again, make sure you clean off or squeeze out as much water as possible if you're doing this. Good, dry it off, and then we'll use this to dry it even more. And there you go, look at it, it's all clean now. Okay, what about inside here? That actually looks fine. Oh, actually I already looked at that, so. Okay, so that looks fine. Since we have access now to the heat sinks and stuff, just kind of brush off the dust from it. All right, and there is the logic board all cleaned up. Not really much else to show here. Um, I'm not too sure what this is because that looks different from these, so it might not be storage. It might be like RAM. Um, but yeah, okay. So we got that all cleaned up. Everything looks good. Um, there's a little bit of smudging here. I don't know if that's going to come out. It might be a scrape. Let's try cleaning this up a little bit. Oh yeah, it's not coming out. It's more like a scrape or something. Okay, so we got the board all cleaned up. We're going to set this side on, a, on an ESD, electrostatic discharge bag, so we don't accidentally damage it. Okay. Here you can see the fans if you want to remove them. There's four screws holding those in place. Um, since there was some liquid on the fan area, maybe I'm gonna, let's go ahead and remove those just to see underneath. What kind of screws are they using here? Oh, they switch. Of course they do. All right, so um, the two outermost ones are T5 or Torx 5 screws. Okay, so this one here, and then this one here. So we're gonna remove those first, and then the rest are T3 or Torx 3 screws, okay? Get those out. Switch over to the T3, Torx 3 screwdriver. And we'll remove all these. the three over here oh good thing we're removing this because there is some liquid residue stuff there it seems okay this one i definitely underquoted for this okay so i'll get those out go get this out 
All right, now that we've got that out, we're gonna pull up these fans um, and there is liquid underneath, so they're probably gonna be stuck. You can see, carefully peel that up. Okay. Slowly, carefully. There we go. And yeah, good thing we peeled that up. You can see there's all this liquid residue under there. So we're gonna have to clean that up. It's enough to blacken or darken brown the paper towel. Okay, we'll set that aside for now. Let's clean this up. And we're just going to keep wiping this until hopefully the residue will go away. You can see where I wipe where there's coffee, it's like darkens. And as I keep wiping, it's kind of lightening a little bit. Let me see if I dry it up. Okay, you can see as I dry it. Now it's all about the same color. I am going to clean it a bit more. You can actually tell where I cleaned it though because of the material underneath. So more ways for Apple to know that you've done something to it. <laughs> all right. Honestly, I don't know anybody that um, does a more careful job than I do with this kind of thing. So usually they'll know right away if you opened it because people will not put things back right. Okay, so that one's good. You can see the bottom of the fan looks pretty good. We do need to clean it a little bit more. Okay, let's brush this a little bit because we have it open. All right. all right, there we go. This fan is all clean. All right, inside looks good. If for some reason the inside has stuff, there are screws here that you can take apart and then you should be able to separate the bottom layer. You can actually see the seam running along there, but you should be able to separate the top and the bottom. Anyways, let's set that aside for now. Let's go ahead and pop this one off. Okay, it's also kind of stuck, so maybe liquid also got under there. Oh, a tiny bit, all right? You can actually see residue there and that, so we're gonna continue. We're gonna clean this one again, just like the other one. There's also crumbs and stuff there. Okay, so most of the liquid is on the outer edge here. I'm gonna just wipe that up. And I can actually tell when I wipe this with water where the liquid was, you can see like it blackens where it was. Interesting. Okay, so there's that. I'm gonna clean this with a cleaner one now. Same thing with a little bit of water. And then same thing over here. Okay, let me try it up. What is this? A little foamy something came from somewhere. I don't know where this came from. It looks like it should be held down with adhesive. Hmm. I don't know. That's weird. Okay, I might have to rewatch the video now to see because it might be an important, I mean, it's not important, I'm sure, but it might be something that needs to kind of help a little bit with either vibration or so Apple doesn't know that something was done. Okay, you can see this is all clean now. Okay, I don't know if that foam pad was stuck under, oh, this one's a little bit gross here. I need to clean that better. one had some stuff stuck there so I need to clean that 
Okay, now it looks all clean. All right, is this a little bit of coffee? I don't know. Okay, um, I'm gonna see if I can figure out where this little piece came from. Most likely, I think it was probably here, but I'm not too sure. But I am going to have to rewatch my video for that. So give me a second, I'll be back. All right, I'm back. And just as I thought, it did come from that little hole there. Um, there's some coffee residue in there, in this little corner. So let me see if I can clean that. The problem is it's a very small area. So what I'm gonna have to do is probably, let's see, tear a little piece of paper there. And we'll try and use this to kind of just go in there. stuck in there. <laughs> okay, it's working. Okay, so that seemed to work well. All right, now let me try and put that little black piece back. I just got to get the coffee out of there. There's some in here as well, so I'm gonna have to see if I can get something down there to clean it out. Okay, so this piece goes here. Oops. It does have a little adhesive on it, but basically it goes right there. It's annoying, it doesn't want to stick. Stay there. Okay, so we'll just put that back there. All right, just like that. Okay, now we're gonna have to clean that little thing down there. So let me see if I can get a piece of paper to put in there and move it around. So we'll get that in there. It's working. Good. All right. Can I get this back out? Good. All right. There's also some down in this little crevice here. So I'm probably going to have to use like a paper clip or something to get this down there because I don't know if this will reach. Let's see. Actually, it does reach. Okay. So we'll clean that up as well. that all cleaned up look at that you okay let's take a look in this side this side seems okay except for the top corner here so we'll get that up there and we'll use that to clean it little corner edge here. Good. All right. Okay. I think we got all of that out. Oh, there's still a little bit around that circle post here.
Okay, so we got that all cleaned up. Now we're going to have to see about taking these little ports out and see if there's anything over there. There's a tiny bit of stuff up here, so we'll clean that. Okay. Just all have some stuff that actually won't didn't even come out. Clean that up. Okay, looks good. All right, give me a second. I'm gonna check some messages again. All right, let's go ahead and see. So. These pieces all look okay. There was some coffee here. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. All right. So we're going to see, I think it's a T5 that we're going to be using here. Yep. So this is for the charge port. Oh, these screws aren't even magnetic. Oh man, that's going to be a little bit annoying as well. Okay. So, get those screws out. Come on. I'm going to use needle nose pliers. There we go. Okay. So, now that we got those two screws, can we lift this up? Let's see. How is this being held here? So, I'm trying to get underneath and pull it up doesn't want to move it might be because there's coffee in it so let's see I don't see any other screws holding it so yeah I don't know what's holding it down let's um let's try this thin tool get underneath and see if we can kind of pull it up a little I mean, we're under that tab, but it's not coming out, so we're going to kind of wiggle it a little. It doesn't want to move. Am I missing something here? Oh, psh. there's two more screws right there. Barely noticeable. What are these? T3s? Are they T3s? I have no idea. Let's see. Yeah, feels like T3. Torx 3 screws. Okay, sorry. I was wondering why it wasn't coming out. That's why. Good thing I didn't pry too hard. Alright, so we got these screws here. Are they T3? Okay, yeah. Oh, make sure you get a good grip on them when you turn. Don't try and spin the screwdriver too fast. Okay, so we got that screw out. And then one more here. Make sure you push down hard. There we go. Okay, so now we got all those screws out. Now we can get it out, right? Yep, there we go. And here you have that. We can go ahead and brush this off a little bit. And it's actually pretty clean there. So here you can see what the charge port looks like. Okay. All right. It just looks like that. So if you need to replace it, you can. All right, I'm going to put this back in. And how do those other screws... So those other two screws, they just kind of sit on top. As you can see, there's nowhere for the screws to hold it. So they kind of just sit on top there. Interesting. Okay, so I'm going to put these two screws in, but just loosely for now. I like to twist them backwards first to hear the click so I can make sure they go in properly. Okay, so now we got those two in loosely. I'm gonna get the T5, Torx 5 ones. We're gonna get this back in 
and we're going to get these screws in. So you can see how it tilts up like that. That will kind of help, I think, with getting the screws in. So I can try and drop it there. Oh no, it's, these screws are a pain because they're not magnetic. So we got to get that and drop it in. Come on. Come in where you're supposed to. There we go. That one and drop that one. Okay, so they dropped in place. What I'm going to do to line it up is I'm going to get the charger, make sure it's not plugged into the wall, obviously, and we're going to get this just to pull it to the case. Okay, so just like this, you can see how it lined itself up. Oops, I should have. Okay, well, let's get this one screw real quick, loosely. Okay, then we'll get the other screw that flew out. We'll try and drop that in place. There we go. Okay, then we will go ahead and get this. And okay. All right. Again, make sure because it can wobble a little bit, so make sure it's lined up well. Okay. What I like to do also is kind of pull on it a little bit so that it's kind of as close to the outside of the casing as possible. Let me actually get these little ones in first. So we're going to get these little screws in. There we go. And it actually tilted it up slightly. I'll tighten that guy down. Perfect. Okay, so now we have the charge port in, and we'll tighten these two other screws back down. Okay. There we go. So that's good. We'll take that out. Set that aside again. All right. We got these other little screws as well. So these are for the USB-C ports. Okay. I think we need a T. Is that not a T3? What is that? Is that smaller than a T3? Whoa. Are you kidding me? They're using like a T2 there? Even smaller? Is that a T1? No way. Oh shoot, they're using T1 screws? No. That didn't even, it just, yeah. <laughs> I don't know, is that a T1? <sighs> My T1 screwdriver is not I don't have the right T1 screwdriver for that. So it looks like these are T1 or Torx 1 screws, but my T1 screwdriver bit is not the same good quality and I think it broke itself. Yeah. Yeah, my T1 screwdriver is not good enough quality. It just sheared itself off. So if you do need to replace these it's definitely yeah t2 definitely won't fit so i'm gonna need a new um screwdriver bit oops sorry i was going out of view but the screws right there those are t1s and they're super tiny and my screwdriver can't even undo those so let's see if we don't remove that can we still remove it we got the t5s here so we got a t5 here and a t5 here Okay, you don't need to remove the T1 screws. So we got that, and we can take this out. So this looks relatively clean. I think we should be okay. We don't have to replace it or anything. Okay, that worried me because I was like, oh no, we're going to have to replace stuff. There's a little bit of junk on it. Oops. So we do want to wipe it a little. But uh, in terms of like coffee, there's nothing there. So I think we should be okay. Okay, so that screw, that came out nicely. We can go ahead and push this back in. Okay, get the screw back in place. Oh man, this is, these screws are gonna be a little tricky. There we go. Okay, loosely fit it. 
same thing with the other one. Loosely fit it. Once you get it loosely fit, you can kind of push this inwards with your finger from the back here. I don't know if you can even see, or you can use a tool, whatever works for you. You can push it in, okay, and then go ahead and tighten that down. Tighten this one down. Okay, we're going to take out the other one just to check, but it should be exactly the same. So we've got those two out, and now take this out. Good thing we don't have to remove the T1 Torx 1 screws. And yeah, this one's actually also cleaner than the other one. So we'll get that back in. The microphones are just held down with adhesive down here. So if for some reason you need to replace that, keep that in mind. Okay. Loosely fit the screws first. Come on, get in there. This one's kind of being a pain. Just let me go in. There we go. Okay. And then same thing, I'm just going to hold it in place with this while I put these screws in all the way. Okay, I'm not sure with the T1 screws, I think that's for like a spring. So if for some reason um, the USB-C ports are popping out easily, maybe that's what that's for. I'm not quite sure. Not quite sure. I don't know if you can tell, but yeah, we didn't have to remove these tiny ones up here. Okay, then we have the headphone jack connector here. We're going to go ahead and remove that as well. Um, same thing using the T5 or Torx 5 screwdriver. Is there just one screw? Oh no, there's two. So there's this one as well. Okay, once you remove those two, you can easily just take this out. And this looks good as well. Alright, and that part just comes out like that. So if you need to replace this, if for some reason your headphone got stuck in there or something, because a lot of people get their headphones stuck in there. I don't know how, but uh, all right. I'm gonna now get the screws in. Again, I just loosely fit it first until I can make sure that all the screws are in place. And then, come on, go in. Why isn't it going in right? See, it's not lining up right. There we go. Okay, and then you can kind of help pull the headphone jack into place and tighten it down. Good. Good. All right, not really much else here. There's the power button here. Um, I don't want to mess with this because this one, again, if you damage this, then, oops, sorry. If you damage this, then you're never going to get Touch ID back. But there are four screws holding this metal plate. There's one hidden underneath this cable. You got a screw here and two screws up here. And then I think you should be able to pop it out. But you got to unwrap this um, cable from here and it will slide out through the front. So, all right, be careful with that. All right, we're going to check this one because we checked all the rest. So might as well check this one as well. If it's dirty, we can clean it up. So, yeah. All right, and these, um, you can uh, remove these without taking out the motherboard, it seems, all right? And this one looks really clean as well, so we're all good there. Let's go ahead and get this back in, get the fans back in, get the motherboard back in, and then begin working on cleaning up the keyboard keys. Okay. All right, hold that in place. And tighten that down. Here we go. Perfect. 
All right, so let's go ahead and zoom back out. We are gonna get the fans back in place. <clears throat> Give me a second, I'm gonna check messages again. All right, I'm back. Let's go ahead and get the fan back in place. Basically just drop it back into place. Make sure everything's lined up. Does this have to slot in somehow? Okay, so these pieces back here look like they kind of slot in. So make sure you slide it up into place. And it lines up, okay? All right, we'll get the T5 screw in first. And here you can actually see where this little foamy thing sticks down here. So it goes around the fan, I think, right there. Okay, so we got that T5 screw in. We're gonna go on the other side, do the same thing. So again, you start from down here and you slide it up because it has to go into those, these need to go into that little groove under there. Okay, and then you can see when you push it up in that groove, if you try and slide it side to side, it kind of stays in place and doesn't really move around. Okay, so we'll get the other T5, Torx 5 screw in. Good. All right, let's switch over now to the T3, Torx 3 screwdriver. And let's just get all the screws back for these fans. We'll zoom out so you can see both at the same time. Okay. Pretty straightforward, just get all those screws back in. Okay, be careful not to um, tighten too hard because you can easily break these screws, I think. Usually when they're really small, they can break a lot easier. So just be careful. The problem is if you don't tighten hard enough, it can come back out, so. Oh, I noticed I missed a little bit here, so we are gonna clean that as well. If we can. Might need a little bit of water. More water. No, that's good. Okay, let's see if it tries on. Yeah, it looks good, okay. Can't even tell. All right, we'll get these screws in. Okay. Again, the hardest part will be getting the motherboard back in because all these cables need to end up back on top and inside. If you accidentally trap one underneath, then you're going to have to take it back out, fish it back out. It's very annoying, all right? All these cables on the side need to be pulled out of the way. These cables need to be held up into the into place. Okay, I kind of wonder how they assemble this at the factory because it seems very annoying to have to do this. Okay, give me a second, I'm going to check some more messages and use the restroom and I'll be back. <laughs> All right, so I'm back. Let's go ahead and put this thing back together. So logic board first. Okay, it's currently raining, lightning and thunder outside. All right, so again, like I said, this is gonna be pretty difficult. So you gotta keep it tilted. We gotta also get this rubber piece on top. Also get this piece on top. So we're gonna carefully work our way over okay let's see how I can do this to get it probably easiest way is to tilt this one up very far okay get that lined up I'm gonna slowly be lowering it down I'm getting my hand under here um, we do have to get this rubber piece out to the other side okay I'm gonna have to move this here so I have a little bit better angle to work on it and this will probably be easier with someone helping you but most people aren't going to have that so we got to work with what we got so let's go ahead and hold this out of the way again slowly lower it down okay making sure that this cable ends up on top 
making sure these rubber things end up on top. Okay. All right, we got to make sure this cable ends up on top. Underneath, don't forget that fan connector there. And that's going to be very difficult. So it will help to have like a little tool to kind of push this, get underneath and push it in place. Or I can't really see here from this angle. I need to rotate it so I can see better. You can go from this side and pull this out this way. Okay. You can see that's coming out. Get that on top. Carefully, slowly lowering it down more. Again, make sure the rubber pieces end up on top. Okay. Make sure we're not forgetting any cables here. Okay, we also got to get this side up at the same time. So make sure this rubber piece goes in there. So push that back. All right. That rubber piece out. It's hard to do it at this angle and viewpoint. I probably have to rotate it so I can see better. But uh, get that up through there. Okay. All right. Again, make sure to pull all these cables through. We yeah, have this. Uh, what was this small cable for? Was there? There was no cable there, right? No. Oh, that's for the battery. Okay, so we're gonna use this tool to pull these cables out. The keyboard and that other little cable, which again, I'm not too sure. I didn't pay attention. I think that's probably the keyboard backlight cable. I didn't pay attention, <laughs> but I think that's the keyboard backlight cable. Okay, we're going to continue slowly lowering this down. Again, make sure this rubber piece ends up on top. And then we've got all these cables on the side here that we need to make sure come out as well. Okay. Microphone, the two USB-C ports, the charge port. Okay, carefully lowering it down. Don't forget the other fan connector that's still trapped under there. I'm going to have to rotate this to give myself a better view. Okay, so, oops, I need to lift this up more again. Get this out here. Just like that. Slowly lowering it. These cables, I think, are getting caught again. And the rubber piece here, again, make sure it ends up on top. Slowly wiggling it and working our way down okay it's still getting caught on something here which i'm not sure what okay it's slowly it's dropping into place something is caught somewhere oh the rubber piece here okay make sure that goes all the way up same thing with that one and you get everything it's getting caught on oh oops we missed the headphone jack connector so we've got to carefully lift this back up see how annoying that is you miss one and you're having to do it all over again okay headphone jack get all these back underneath hi hopefully you guys are able to see everything Headphone jack is being annoying. There we go. And now we gotta get the fan connector back up. See how annoying that is? You'll think you got all the connectors, you lift it up to pull something out, and then something else gets caught underneath. Okay, got that one, that one, that one, that one, that one, then. Okay, the rubber pieces again. Alright, let's rotate this. There we go. Double check all the connectors are on top. Okay, that one, that one, this fingerprint. 
these two. Okay, I think we got all the connectors on top. Give me a second because I need to answer some messages again. All right, so I'm back. Let's go ahead now. Basically, we got to reconnect everything. And then we should be good to go. Hopefully, again, we didn't miss any connectors. I'm going to quickly look over the whole board just to make sure. Okay, I think that's all of them. So we're going to zoom in, reconnect everything, and then we'll continue putting it back together. So we got this cable here, again, for the fingerprint sensor, power button, touch ID. I'm going to rotate it this way so it's easier for me to see. Oh, now I have no room to move this over for you guys to see. Let me see here. Okay, hopefully this will work. Okay. So we got that. Line that up, and once you get it in, just push it into place, but this is being a little bit tricky. Come on. There we go. Shift, stay over. Okay. Click that down. Good. That's clicked into place. <clears throat> you can push down the adhesive again. we got the USB-C port here. Line that up. And click that in. These connectors are a little bit tricky to get back in place, so you might have to like pull on them to line them up right. Okay, there we go. Oops, sorry. It's going out of view, but there we go. It's connected in place. All right, we got the speaker over here. You can use this tab to help pull it back. I usually use my fingernail at the tip of the connector to help pull it backwards. Okay, and then it goes in. Then make sure to push that in so it goes all the way. Slide your finger over the latch to lock it down. All right, put that adhesive down. Okay, we got the fan connector here. Make sure the latches are up for these. Okay, there's adhesive underneath. So when you get these, make sure you're not accidentally pushing, sticking down the adhesive. Then I use the bottom or the tip of my fingernail to push at the bottom of this tab to pull it in. And then once it's in, slide my finger over the latch. You can go ahead now, tape that back down. Okay, we'll leave the touchpad connector out because we do have to wait until we put the battery connections and stuff back in. Okay, so we're going to work our way over here. We got the keyboard connector. So make sure the latch is up. Get that lined up and come on. Come on. I can't do it upside. I can't do it that way. I have to flip it upside down. Okay, let's look at this. Okay, pull that in. Alright, looks like it's in. Make sure it's in all the way. And then slide your finger over the latch to lock it down. There we go. Alright, keyboard backlight connector, same thing, line it up. Pull that in, good. Slide your finger over the latch to lock it in. Get that down. Okay, we got the other speaker connector here. Make sure that latch is up as well. Pull it back, get that in. Okay, make sure it goes in. It doesn't feel like it went in. Come on, go lock in. Oh, actually, okay. That should be good. And then we'll slide our finger over that latch. Good. Okay, look at this one. Make sure this cable goes in. Okay, the adhesive is kind of interfering. There you go. Slide your finger over the latch. Put that down. We got this one for the headphone jack. Line it up. that down good okay the two other USB-C ports all right looks good okay looks good and then this guy okay the charge port there we go Perfect. All reconnected. Oh, we forgot the one fan here. 
Don't forget the fan. You don't want your computer to overheat. Line it up. Pull it in. Okay. And then slide your finger over the latch. Okay. Now let's go ahead and put the screen back on. Okay. We'll wait for the screws. We'll put the screen on first. And then we'll go ahead and do the screws. So we got this here. So your hinges should already be folded open all the way. And then these cables, we have to make sure to get them on top. So I'll get my fingers under here, hold these cables up out of the way. We'll slowly lower the screen into place. We can drop those cables down. Okay. Then just get the thing in, drop it in again. Now you can see the thing will hang like this. Okay. You might have to let the screen go to 90 degrees to get it to drop in. All right, just like before, and then you can go ahead and raise it up and get the screws in place. So right now we're gonna go ahead and get just these two centermost screws in to hold it in place. <clears throat> we'll do the rest after. So we're putting the T9 or Torx 9 screwdriver. Okay. And we'll loosely fit this screw. So we'll put the screw in, but we're not like tightening it all the way down yet. Okay. And the reason for that is because we're going to have to make sure it's lined up properly. So now that we got those two screws in, we're going to slowly, carefully close it up. And you want to go slow because just in case it's getting caught on anything, you don't want to accidentally like rip the screen out. Okay. Or damage the body. Okay. We're going to loosen these screws a little bit. And now what we can do, we can kind of adjust this. Um, I don't know if you can tell, but um, the little gap here, you can actually move the screen and the body around so that it's lined up differently. So I'm going to just go around the whole thing and kind of make sure everything is lined up right. Okay. You want to make sure the edge back here is smooth. Okay. The edge back here. Okay. So you don't want that. And then I try and center the little gap in between here and here. That's what I try and line up. Okay. All right, looks good. Let's go ahead and tighten this down. And tighten this down. Okay, I think we should be good there. And hmm, it's a little bit, it's a little bit misaligned actually. So I'm going to loosen it a little and then adjust it again. Okay, there we go. And tighten that. This guy, same thing, line it up a little. Okay, there we go. Good, the gap looks very centered. So now we're going to tighten in the rest of these screws, okay? Just like this. Hopefully I'm not forgetting to do something ahead of the others. I think this is correct. There are a lot of pieces to this thing, so. Okay. So we got that. Okay, good. All right, now we have that little metal plate that we need to put back here. So we're gonna make sure to put that back. Okay, switching over to the T3 or Torx 3. I think we're done with the T9 or Torx 9, so we'll set that aside. Okay, let's get the metal plate here. And we'll get that lined back up. I'll loosely fit that one screw. Then we'll take the second one line it up 
Did I get the one from the wrong spot? I might have. Okay, I think I'm skipping ahead of myself. Um, I'll take this back out. Yeah, I think I put the wrong one. So we'll take that out. Put that back. Okay, so what we're going to do, we're going to rotate this and flip that. Yeah, I took, I took the wrong one out. Okay. Um, so we need to reattach this connector, and that's where that metal plate's from. Sorry about that. So get this lined up. And come on. Get that lined up and click that in. There we go. Okay, so that's good. Now we can get this back in. Okay, I'm pretty sure it came from this one. Right, hopefully. Okay, good, that is the right one. Get that back in place, line that up. Okay, and then now that we got both, we can go ahead and tighten the screws in. That one and this one. Perfect, okay. Next thing, we gotta get the two little metal plate thingies back in before we forget. Okay, so these little metal things, we'll get that back in. So one on this side. Be a little tricky to get that in, but there we go. Okay, we have to actually use the T5 or Torx 5 screwdriver to put this back in. Loosely fit it first. Okay, hold that into place. I'm pushing it up into the casing this way. Tighten that in. Okay, we'll go over to the other side, do the same thing. That metal plate, drop it in. Okay, there we go. We'll get these two screws. Make sure you kind of hold it into place. Okay, push it into place and tighten it down. Good. So we can go ahead and reattach these, but don't forget the little, these little pad thingies that were under there. Okay, so get these back in. Okay, goes like that. I think this actually has to go, so it makes it a little bit tough here. Let me show you here. So this piece, um, you have to push this in first. So this excess flap goes, then you put this on top. Okay, make sure that it goes on top. And then we get this cable and plug this in, okay? So line this up. Did I need to put the... Do I need to put the antenna first, or will this go in like that? Let me see here. Okay, no, I don't need to put the antenna first. Okay, so get that lined up, and then we'll click this cable into place. Make sure you line it up right, and then push it in. Push it in. Okay, feels like it's in right. Oh, this cable pops up so easily. <laughs> okay, so goes on like that. Do the same thing with this one. Okay. Basically tilt this backwards to get the bowed out excess part up there. 
then we get this in. Okay, then we get that over, and we push these in. There we go. This one in. There we go. So those two cables actually kind of clicked in a bit. Okay, so next we got these brackets that covered the cables here. We'll put those back. Okay. Make sure that's all pushed in. I think those are T3 Torx 3 screws, so we'll switch back over. <clears throat> Grab those screws. And again, we're going to loosely fit the first one. Then grab the second one. Tighten that down and tighten that down. Okay, good. Same thing with the other one. Tighten that loosely. And we get this one in again, also loosely fit. And then now that we got both, tighten it down and tighten it down. Okay, we got all of that. What else? This one, does it go on top? Okay, so this goes on top. So we got this in. Just get that in, line it up. It doesn't clip in or anything, it's all held in with the screws, right? Or does this clip? Let me see here. Yeah, there's no clips for this, so you just get it lined up. Drop it into place. Okay. I'm gonna zoom out a little bit here. We're gonna use the um, P2 or Pentalobe 0 0.8 screwdriver and get the nine screws back in. First thing I'll do is the outer one here. Okay. And the other outer one over here. Okay, to make sure it's all lined up. All right, and I just loosely fit it because you can see it can still wobble around. Okay, next we're gonna go ahead and pop these wireless antennas back in. Um, actually, let's go ahead and get all these screws lined up here. I'm just going to loosely fit them all first. Okay. So we're not tightening them in yet. We're just loosely fitting it. And as you can see, I'm still turning it backwards to hear the little click. Okay. And I'm just loosely fitting these right now, so they're not tightened in yet. Okay. Last one. Okay. Now that we got those, you want to kind of make sure to hold it centered. You can go ahead and tighten the center one first. Tighten the outer one here. I like to try and hold this in place because it does move a little bit. It does have a little play. So I pull it as close as I can to the body and then we can tighten it. All right, then we'll tighten all the rest. Again, be careful not to tighten too fast, too hard because you don't want to strip these screws or you'll never be able to get them out again. Okay. Okay, give me a second. I need to check some messages again. I'll be back. All right, so I'm back. Let's go ahead now and get the wireless antennas clicked into place. Um, you want to make sure you get them lined up before pressing down because these connectors are pretty fragile. So, okay, there we go. Come on, there we go, put that, 
And the last one here. Oh, this one's being a little bit misaligned. You gotta push it back. There we go. Alright, clicked all three into place. Now we're gonna go ahead and put the metal bracket back on. Goes diagonal here. Alright. Still using the T3 or Torx 3. Oops, let me put away the P2. We're done with that. Alright, T3, Torx 3. So it helps to kind of hold on to this bracket and then get the screw in first. And then you can use that to help align the first one. There we go. Then we'll get the second one. that in and tighten it down. Good. Tighten that down. Good. All right, we get this screw here. Perfect. Okay, now we need to get the ones for the brackets up here. Okay, so we got the two, two, and then we got the ones on the further, but let's go ahead and do these middle ones first. I think we need the T5 again for that. Yep. Switch back over to the T5, Torx 5. And we'll tighten down this bracket here. Good. This one here. Come on, there we go. I think it's actually not lining up right. It's going in a weird. Come on. There we go. Okay. So we've got those two. We'll do this side as well. One there. This one here. Good. Now we got the long ones that go out to the sides. Okay. One out here. Alright, and one out here. Right, now to put back all the other screws. So again, they had four hidden underneath these corners. Um, so make sure to get those back in. Okay. So get that. Lift this up. While we're holding that up, we'll get the screw in there. And we'll tighten that down. Good. You can put that little piece back under. Okay. There we go. Second one. Lift that up as well. Okay. And place the bracket up. And we'll get this one in. Come on. The tab gets in the, the little circle sticker gets in the way. <laughs> get out. I'm using my finger, middle finger because my index finger's fingernail got trimmed and it makes it really hard to do this. There we go. Cover that one back up. Okay. Lift this guy up as well. Get that screw in. Okay. Cover that up as well. Alright, and the last hidden one, lift that up, get that screw in, okay, tighten that down, good, there we go. Alright, so we got those four in, now we just gotta get everything else in. So this one, it switches back and forth between all different sizes. 
Um, I think one was T6. I think it was this one. I don't remember if the other one was. But let's go ahead and get that screw in. Okay, so this is one the T6 fits. I'll tighten that in. Was the other corner also T6? I think, yes. Okay, so we got these two corner screws in. And you want to be careful not to accidentally screw that down on top of there, okay? So let me zoom in here. You can see here, this cable is gonna get smashed by this, so you do wanna pull it up out of the way and then go ahead and tighten that down. There we go. And then you can put that back in the way. Okay, just one important thing to show there, okay? So I think we're done now with the T6 Torx 6 screwdriver, so I'll put that away. We'll switch back over to the T5 or Torx 5. And pretty much I think anything that's not with the little metal brackets are going to be T5. So let me see here. We've got this guy down here. Oh, I was wrong. We're going to need the bigger screwdriver again. Okay, so back to the T6 or Torx 6. Okay, for this guy. And I think the other one was T5, because I remember one of them was like not matching the rest, right? Yeah, the T6 won't quite work there. So now we're done with the T6. Let's go back to the T5, Torx 5. We'll get this screw in. Okay, sorry if you couldn't see which one. That one right there. All right. Get the whole bottom row here of T5 or Torx 5 screws. There's four of them. The wider flat top ones go on the outer edges and the smaller skinnier ones go at the bottom middle here. Come on. There we go. That's good. Second one. and the last one for the bottom here okay perfect all right let me see what I was looking at here earlier okay that's just a sticker that doesn't really need to do anything okay so now we got the two outer ones here guy up here there we go and this one okay perfect hopefully everything is good nice and tight now put all these in all of those in okay Everything's good. Let's go ahead now and switch over to the T3 or Torx 3. Again, I'm going to zoom in now so you can see a little bit closer up all the little pieces that I got to put back. I'll put these metal plates all back in place. So this metal plate, one of one side is flat and the other side's round. So make sure you put it the right way. Loosely fit it. Okay, second one. Get this screw in. Okay, and get that lined up. Good, tighten that down, tighten this down. Okay, now we got these. for the little power button fingerprint reader touch ID okay be careful because there's little components all around all these little pieces all right we'll get this one in and we'll tighten that down all 
There we go. Okay. Now we're going to work our way over to this side and do the same thing. So, this one. Okay, get that screw in. Second one. Line it up and tighten this into place. Good. And tighten that one down. Good. All right, then we got the other three here. So let's get that off. Okay, loosely fit it. Get the other outer one here. And we can go ahead and tighten that down now. And the center one. There we go. All right, then we got the last little metal plate here for that, other than the touchpad track pad. There we go. And second one. Make sure it's lined up. And go. Alright, there we go. Tighten that into place. Good. Alright. Let's go ahead now. Get the battery all reconnected. Flip it over, turn it on, and hopefully we still have life with this thing. Okay? So we're going to switch over now to the T5, Torx 5 screwdriver. We're gonna push this metal tab back down. You might have to kind of pull, pull it this way, okay? So basically you wanna make sure that the um, screw thing is more centered. All right, and then we're gonna get this screw in. Okay, and tighten it down. There we go, got that screw in. We're done now with the T5, Torx 5 screwdriver. We're gonna switch back over to the T3. We do have to get this little piece back in as well. Just like all the other ones, make sure the latch is flipped up. Pull the cable in. Okay. This cable is very important. If it's not in all the way, your battery is not gonna work. And I think your MacBook likely won't turn on either. So make sure you get this cable in all the way completely. Okay, so pull that little tab, make sure it goes in, and then slide your finger over the latch. You can tape that piece down, and we got this side, same thing. Make sure this goes in all the way. You have to peel this so it's not stuck to the connector. Okay, make sure it's not stuck to the connector. All right. And we're gonna get this lined up and get that in. Sorry, sorry I'm getting in the way. I know you can't really see because my hand's there, but hopefully you get the idea. All right, you can actually see a little bit of the gold shows on the back, that's normal, okay? Same thing with the other side. All right, now we got that. We'll get the touchpad trackpad connector in, line it up, click it down, okay. And we'll get this little metal plate back on top. And then the last thing after this, we're going to have to fix the um, sticky keyboard keys. So we'll get this in. I'm going to have to get a warm bowl of water for that. Uh, let's get all these back in. Get the dust off. Okay, so there we go. We got it all reassembled. I'm gonna actually send my customer a picture real quick. Give me a second, I'll be back. All right, so I'm back. Let's go ahead and get the bottom cover back on. Okay, so here we have the bottom cover. So to get this, you gotta line up like this. Oops, let me zoom out a little bit. Okay, 
So you see, you start a bit lower here. Line it up. I'll actually zoom out a little bit more. Okay. Line it up. And we're going to slide it. The reason why we slide it up is because these little clips here, here, and here, they go into the little air vent notches here. Okay. So you can't just stick it on top. You have to slide it. Make sure you're holding this down when you do that. So slide that up. And slide this up. It helps to kind of use the little feet to be able to do it. And if it's not lining up, then you can kind of use the feet to kind of help move it left and right a little bit. There we go. All right. Make sure it's flat, that nothing's sticking up. Then you can go ahead and click the sides just like that. Click the middle. Click the edges. Okay. Oh, what is that? Gunk is stuck on it. There we go. Looks like that's permanently there. Maybe that's from something. I don't know. All right. Now we're going to switch back over to the T5. Uh, sorry, the P5 or Pentalobe 1.2, and we'll get the rest of the screws back in. Then we'll go ahead and power it up. Okay. So let's go ahead and get all these screws in. Good. Good. Okay, most likely we're gonna have to plug this in or it's not gonna turn on. Okay. So make sure you have the charger working. If you don't have a working charger, then this won't power on most likely. Okay. Last few screws in. Right, and hopefully this video helped you guys out. If it did, please make sure to like, subscribe, share my channel with others so that they can learn how to upgrade and repair their devices as well. Comment, and also if it helped you save a bunch of money, please consider contributing a little to the channel. Every little bit helps and allows me to continue making these videos for a living. All right, methods of doing that are in the description below. Let's go ahead and pop this open and let's see if it powers up. Again, we probably have to plug it in. So as you can see, nothing is happening. So let's go ahead and plug it in. Okay, so I'm gonna get this. Plug in my charger. Okay. Oops, the charger's all tangled up, so let me untangle it real quick. Okay. Alright, so we've got the charger now. We'll plug this in and hopefully we'll have life so charge light nothing oh there we go turn orange and it's turning on okay trackpad is clicking and we should have to just now clean up these gross keys but we'll see how that goes all right you can see it powered on i don't think this has the yeah it doesn't have the smc and pram reset as far as i know Let's do try a PRAM command option PNR. I don't think it has a PRAM reset. It doesn't have the SMC reset, so likely it won't have this either. Yeah, nope, nothing. Um, I think the M1s, if you want to go into recovery mode, you press and hold the power button, and then it will go into the recovery mode. Like, you just have to keep holding it down, and eventually it will do it. So if I shut it down, let me see if I can show you. But basically... Make sure it's off. Oh, it's actually still on. We'll press and hold the power button. Because it's still on. Oops. There you go. Continue holding for startup options. There you go. Um, and that's pretty much it. Let's go ahead and try and get the keys out and see if I can fix them. Okay, so I just kept holding the power button and I think it's going into the startup options. I'm going to make sure I shut it down and then I'll start prying out keys. Um, the keys can be a little bit tricky to get out. Let me see here. Okay, F9 is really bad, F10 is really bad. I'm gonna get a bowl of warm water as well so I can dunk these in there and then that way I can clean off the coffee easily, okay? So let me go do that and I'll be back. See you guys in a bit. All right, so I'm back. The MacBook is actually now fully charged. Want to make sure it still turns on. All right, looks good. 
All right, so we gotta get through finding which keys are sticky. So F9, okay. <clears throat> and the trick here is finding out how these keys are actually held in place. So we're gonna turn this sideways here real quick. And I'm actually gonna see if I can pry one up a little bit. I have like one of these little acupuncture needles. Um, you don't have to use that. You can use whatever you can find that gets in. A regular needle would work fine. Okay. So we're gonna lift up one of these keys slightly. Oh, it's turning itself back on. I don't like that. Okay, and what we got to do is we got to see which hinge is actually the one with the clips. So let me see if I can show you guys what I mean. Let me turn this off again real quick. Okay, give me a second. I need to pry it out and then I'll show you. All right, so the tricky part is when you look in here, you want to find out which part of the hinge is actually having the clips and I guess I can't really show it to you but once I pop it out I'll show you it's hard to show it with the camera okay so here's what I mean if you look at the back of this F9 key all right you'll see there's these squared hooks at the top and then there's these little clampy ones at the bottom so basically what we need to do is pry up at the clampy ones because those will pop out and then these other two top ones can kind of just wiggle out so I'm going to show you how I do this all right it takes a little bit of finesse but uh yeah all right give me a second okay so the F10 um, is also very stuck um, it's a little bit tricky to get underneath these if you have a very thin pry tool you can use that to kind of get underneath okay so you want to get underneath the key once you get underneath the key, you can slide a little thin needle or something under in the middle. So you want to go towards the center. Okay. And then let me actually zoom in some more here. Okay. Once you get towards the center and you get that um, in between the clips, you're going to slide the tool. Okay. Let me actually bend this a little bit. Okay. So that way I can kind of work on it to pry a little bit better okay so you get underneath there and then you slide the tool towards the front where the clips are okay just like this <clears throat> work your way over come on unclip it's being difficult but basically you want to slide it to unclip those things man this is being difficult for some reason come on unclip so you kind of got to wiggle and pull it down those clips am i not getting in between the hinges what's happening here okay so pull that there we go okay so we got that hinge out and then we're going to continue working our way over to the other clip so why is it stuck come on this part is always a pain Am I not getting the clip? What's going on? It's hard to do this while trying to record because normally I don't hold it at these angles. All right, so we're going to try and get this side. Oh, and also I don't have that fingernail. Okay, so we'll get under here. Same thing. Get under the middle of the clip, and there we go. Okay, so once you get both sides popped up, this thing you can kind of just wiggle it, and the coffee is kind of making it stuck but there you go so now we got that out so basically what's happening let me zoom in even more basically what's happening is this is getting pulled up we're sliding the tool in between here where it forms like a V so it'll split and then we basically got to get that tool in between there and then we're pulling down on this part to pull it out of the clips okay and then after you get that, you get these pieces out. Okay, so I'm going to throw these in some warm water. And that should dissolve the, <coughs> the what do you call, the coffee. All right. So let's, let's, let's go ahead and zoom in some more. Okay, so these parts can be also a little bit tricky to remove. So we do have to get these hinge things out to clean them as well. Okay, 
So usually what I do is I get a very small thin flathead screwdriver, get between the two hinges, and then you can kind of twist it to release that. Um, if we can't do it that way, the other way is at the little feet here. <coughs> the little feet here, you can sometimes kind of pull on this and flip it out past the the metal hook there, just like that, okay? So just like this, then we'll go on this side and do the same thing, okay? So we'll go under there, and we'll kind of push that under, there we go, and that works. Then we can kind of push this that way to get this out. And that's what that looks like. So if you, you want to make sure that when you put this back, you don't put it upside down, it goes this way. Um, and if you separate the two hinges, you want to make sure that the one up here, you can actually see the plastic is lower. So you don't want to put it upside down. Here you can see what the back side looks like. You can see the plastic and also the uneven uh, shapes. Okay, so it goes this way. All right, we're going to throw that in the hot water or warm water. Okay, we're going to pop this one out as well. Okay, just like that. And it does take some kind of finesse there. You don't want to end up jabbing the screwdriver into the thing down here. So basically, I'm just holding it and I'm pulling it straight this way. Okay. Okay. So these ones seem okay. Okay, so basically, we're just going to go along and figure out which keys are the ones that are having problems. Okay. <clears throat> It might work to do this with a needle or something, but the problem is, see, if I use this, then you might accidentally just poke through, poke a hole through there. Um, and then the other thing is we're going to clean this as well. And the way you clean that, again, I get a piece of paper towel. You dip a little bit in water like that, and then you kind of just pinch it all to make sure there's no dripping water coming out. Okay. So when you open it back up, you can see it's kind of a little bit wet, but not enough to kind of drip anything. And then that should be enough that you can kind of clean inside here. Okay. And that's pretty much it. We're going to have to do this with all the keys. Some keys are built different than others. So keep that in mind. It's not going to be the same way you pry them out. You don't pry them out all the same way. <coughs> so you'll see that because I'm going to go and to doing the other key. So let's try this with this. I'm going to try it with this uh, acupuncture needle and see if I can do that. So I'm going to pull this up, try and get the needle in between the two spots. And then if I can, no wait, I don't think that'll work. I think it's going to just poke a hole in the, the rubber gasket. So what I was hoping to do was I can thread it through and then just pull it around and that should pop both out but it looks like that's more difficult. So I'm gonna have to do it the hard way. All right. And again, it does help to kind of have fingernails here because then you can kind of pry underneath, but uh, you don't need to. So you might have to use some tool to kind of pry them up. Okay, that still, get this under there. Somebody needs to make a tool that makes this easier. I don't know if there's a special tool that can make this easier. Because this job is always a pain. <laughs> Let me try one thing here. I'm going to try and bend it closer up here. And this thing is pretty bendy, so I might have to... I'll try with a paper clip if this doesn't work out too well. Because removing these keys are always a pain. Okay. Yeah, I might have to use a bentel paper clip. It might work better. Here we go. Got that one. And then we're going to work our way around and get the other one. And again, it helps to kind of be able to look from the side or underneath. So working at this angle is a little bit weird. So, again, yeah, normally... I would try and look in from one of the sides and get the tool in there. And there we go. Okay. 
Okay, once we get that, again, you can kind of just wiggle this, and there we go. And you want to be careful because if these clips break, sometimes these clips parts here will break, and then if that happens, um, yeah, it's going to be difficult to, you're going to have to get replacements. And sometimes these little white little pegs rip off. All right, so sometimes these little things that hold the keyboard keys in place rip off, and then if that happens, then you gotta replace those as well. So anyways, we're gonna pop that out, pop that out, come on. Okay, throw that in the water. Okay, and we're just gonna have to go along and find all the bad keys and continue that. Okay, delete key is definitely bad. Nine is kind of bad. So I'm going to try and do this with, uh, I guess we'll just keep doing it this way because it works. Okay. And Perfect. There we go. Okay, and wiggle that. And here you can see the stuff in there. Okay. And using a flathead screwdriver for this makes it a lot easier. Basically, you're getting underneath and pulling it out at the same time. So, just like that. Okay. For the most part, underneath looks okay. It's mainly the, <coughs> the keys, the bottom of the keys themselves. So, I'm looking at this part and it's not too bad, but uh, we will probably clean that as well. So this key's okay, these keys seem okay. Actually, after pressing them like once, it's okay for a while, and then eventually it gets sticky again, so I don't know. All right, this hinge, I need to look at it sideways to see how it's holding, and it looks like it's holding similar. Not quite sure. Okay, give me a second. Let's open this up and look at it this way. And I know, sorry, it's probably not, uh, you're probably not able to see what's going on here, but, uh, all right, let's see the delete key. Okay, so the delete key actually has a metal bar going across as well. Uh, you can see it right there. Okay, so I have to hold it at a weird angle, but uh, we're going to have to pop out that bar as well. So let's see how I can do this. So we get that tool underneath and pop it. And then after you pop that, you kind of go around and pop the rest out. There we go. So that metal bar has been released. <coughs> then we got to get underneath again and then pop out the actual hinge. So let's see, where's the hinge here? Okay, hopefully they keep the same design and the hinge is at the bottom. Okay, it's really hard to see in there with the camera in the way, so let me see. Okay, get that in. There we go, pop one side and pop the other side, and there we go. I think that should be good. <clears throat> Let's see if we can get this out. So wiggle it, and there we go. Be careful not to twist it around too much, but. All right, you can see this one has a little bit of the coffee there. <clears throat> so we'll throw that in the water as well. We'll also clean this because this also has coffee on it. Okay, then we got these and it looks like there's coffee underneath this one. So we will have to clean that as well. Okay, let's go ahead and pop this out. All right, put those in the water. Okay, the plus symbol is a little bit bad as well. <coughs> All right. 
annoying part with this MacBook is it turns itself on. Let me actually let me shut it down and then I'm going to turn it on with the, uh, what do you call, in the recovery mode so it doesn't keep doing that. Okay, get this under there. Oops, I forgot to turn on the recovery mode. Too, oh, too late. Okay, I'll do it next. There we go. Okay, wiggle that out. Look at that. There's coffee under there. Put that in the hot water. Actually, it's not even hot anymore. It's just lukewarm. Okay, this out. Get that guy out. Oh, I keep doing that. Stop. Okay, this one's a little bit. I'm gonna have to take out like all the keys, I think. That's a lot of keys that I'm gonna have to remove here. Okay, shut this down again. Okay, let me turn on the recovery mode before it does turns itself on again. Continue holding for startup options. <clears throat> okay. Alright, let's continue popping these guys out. There we go. And once you've done enough of these, it gets a little bit easier. So, there we go. See the coffee under there. Throw that in the hot water. Okay, pop this one out. And pop this one out. You gotta be very careful popping these out so you don't accidentally damage them. That one's also crunchy. What? It turned itself off. This is annoying. Okay, there we go. Pull those two out and wiggle that. Okay, throw that in the water. There we go. Okay, what else? I think seven and eight slightly. Barely. F12 is okay. This one's definitely bad. All right, let's get out these seven and eight. Also, let me actually show you with a paper clip because Probably most people won't have whatever that little thingy I'm using is. I don't know what I did with all the little needles I had. They disappeared. So now we're going to use a paper clip. Okay. So we got a paper clip like this. This might actually be easier. I'm going to fold this out. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bend like the tip of it a little bit. This puts a curve so that when I go in to sweep underneath, <clears throat> actually, let me rotate this a bit. I did it wrong. So this will make it easier. I'm going to make it like a handle here. Okay. 
So when you go underneath to kind of sweep, it won't puncture the little rubber piece here, okay? So that's why I kind of do it that way. So, no, no, the 7 and 8 actually seem somewhat okay. But let's go ahead and get... They're a little bit crunchy, so we might as well. Okay, so get the thing under there and pull it. There we go. And we'll get this. Oh, now it's upside down. Get underneath there. Oh, now it's going to go in that direction. It's easier to get like one side out than the other. Let me, I guess, bend the tool so it's flat. That way I can do it both ways. Okay. go there's the eight there's a little bit of coffee on it you can see throw that in the water as well so yeah this is just a very long process of popping all these keys out and we are going to get to the space bar as well because the space bar is actually really bad the seven has a little bit so let's go ahead and pop that out Come on, I can't find the clip. Side. There we go. Wiggle it out. Throw it in the water. Yeah, that did also have some coffee. Okay, there we go. So the water, all the keys are in there, and the coffee, you can actually see the cloudy coffee stuff dissolving there. Okay. So, we're just going to continue going along, finding which keys are bad, and taking them out. That one's fine. These are all fine. I'll just start with the eye and just go all the way across. <clears throat> Come back out. Somebody needs to make a tool that makes this like almost automatic. <laughs> Also that you go in through the middle of the 
thing. No. Let's let out. Come on, let go. There we go. Yep, that one has definitely has coffee in it too. Actually, these have a little bit as well. It's just like after you press it the first time, then it um, loses that clicky, the stickiness temporarily. And then once it sits long enough, it kind of becomes, has time for the stickiness to reattach. Kind of annoying. A little tricky to find the middle to where to unclip it. Okay. There we go. Like that. Yep, there's definitely some tea there. Or not tea, coffee. Only I could just pop them all up from like this, from this clip, and then just take them all out. That would make it easier, but uh, I don't think I can do it that way. None of these clips break in the process. If it's done right, the clip should be intact. Okay, let's see, there's a little bit of coffee in there. Definitely. That's it. All right. Come on, where's the clip? Under the middle. There we go. There we go. Wibble, wibble. Definitely got some coffee in that one. <sighs> it was a long process. Also, if the keys are still slightly wet, the noticeable effect of the stickiness will be gone. So you'll probably want to make sure to test it once it's dried completely as well. Yeah, this whole row needs to go. All right, let me see if I'm getting messages real quick. Okay. All right, let's continue getting these all out.
Well, lots more coffee on this one. I'm gonna have to use some clean water after this to rinse them. There we go. That out. How many are, oh shoot, the bottom row has a lot of keys, I think. Yep, I think all the way starting at the F. Oh man, starting at the F key. Oh man, starting at the Z key. Oh yeah, that's really bad. Seth and Z. And then the space and all this. So pretty much all of this needs to be removed. So more than half the keyboard is going to be removed. You can just fast forward over this <coughs> if you want. But I want to show the entire repair process for this MacBook. Come on. Okay, wiggle, wiggle. Get that out. Yeah, that one's pretty bad. There's a lot of keys. Get that out. Okay. Lots of coffee. Okay. Yeah, their customers are probably going to be wondering what's taking me so long to work on their computers. <laughs> Actually, that one's not bad. Hmm. Strange. Why was it feeling a little sticky? some of this out. I'm gonna have to brush that off with the toothbrush after. Make sure to get all those pieces of paper towel out. <laughs> Yeah, underneath itself isn't really bad. It seems okay. OK. 
Excuse me. Okay. Let's use the toothbrush and get this junk off. This one seems like there's some stuff there, but I don't think it's on the top. I think it's underneath the membrane, which doesn't affect the stickiness of the keys. So. Okay, give me a second and I'll be back. Alright, I'm back. Let's go ahead and continue. Again, starting with the F key because that one was getting stuck. Yeah. Something exploded outside. Come on, get under there. Yep, definitely got some coffee in there. There we go. Definitely got coffee in there. Jeez, that's a lot of coffee that got in this thing. This one actually looks like stuff is stuck in there. Some coffee in there. <sighs> I think I'm not even halfway done. Ouch. Be careful with those clips, they're sharp. Or the metal you call. Yeah. 
poked a hole in my skin. Uh oh. Okay, let's try. Let's clean this a little bit. Get in there. Stabbed a hole in my finger. Ouch. The water's turning less and less clear as I continue. <laughs> this a little bit. Okay. okay, the return key I'm assuming is like the delete or backspace key. Give me a second, I'll be back. 
All right, I'm back. Let's continue removing these keys. Sorry for disappearing so many times. <laughs> All right, I ended up um, rinsing out the other keys I had and putting new warm water in there. So now the bowl is cleaner because the bowl of water was getting gross. All right, we're gonna pop this one up. And again, there is the a metal clip in there. So we're gonna have to pop that out. Okay. Pop that clip out. There we go. Work our way down the key. Pop the other end out. Perfect. Okay. And now let's get the little edges out. There we go. There we go. That key was actually easier to remove than the other ones. Wiggle that. There we go. Get that coffee. It's actually not too bad, so I don't know why that one's sticking so bad. Oh, actually, the shift key. Oh, that's really bad. Okay. Let's go ahead and get this metal thingy out. Okay. Put that in there. And we'll pop this guy out. Let's actually zoom in a little bit here so you can kind of see better of how this is working. Okay. And then just pull this just like that and just like that. Okay. I'm probably going to have to clean inside that a little bit, but uh, let's go ahead and continue. So I think actually the Z key, X key seems okay. Huh. Okay, C key definitely starts. Maybe I should just start with this the Z key because I'm gonna do all that and then later it starts. What did I do with the little needle thing? Huh? Uh oh. The little needle disappeared. Oh, stuck to a magnet on the bottom of the MacBook. Okay. up. Let's see if there's anything under this key, because it did feel a little sticky earlier. I don't know why now it seems okay. Come on. Yeah, there's not, there's no coffee under there. Maybe let's just clean some dust out here, because it is a little dusty underneath. Okay, there we go, and we'll put this back. Alright, make sure you put it the right way. After pressing them, they seem okay now. Okay, we're gonna skip those. Alright. After pressing them a bit, they seem okay, so I don't know. Let's try starting with the M, because this one definitely has some problems. Yeah, the, the sugar is a little bit deceiving, because it'll break a little bit when you first press it, but then after it sits a while, the syrupiness kind of sticks again to itself, so. It's kind of annoying. Makes it difficult to tell if it's fixed or not. Come on. Hold 
table. Yeah, there's definitely some coffee in that one. Okay. I'll work myself, uh, or work my way over to the left. And then that way, when I stop seeing coffee, then I know we're good. Okay. Definitely has coffee in there. Definitely got some coffee in there. end up working all the way back to the Z. got coffee in there. Yeah, we're probably going to end up working all the way back to the Z. That's definitely fine. Definitely got coffee under there. Yep, I guess we're working all the way to the Z.
section. And the X looks fine, but let's clean out the dust. But we ended up prying out all the way from Z to the end anyways because of that. So to put it in, you get those hooks in first and then you clip that down, okay? Okay, we're getting there. <laughs> That's a lot of keys. Okay, I'm gonna have to record this for the, or take a picture for the customer real soon. Uh, well, once we get all these keys out, I guess, so I can show them how many I actually had to pry out. Pop out, please. There we go. Coffee in there. Okay. Yeah, the shift key is like really bad. I can barely even push it down. So. Definitely got some coffee in there. That's coffee in there. Okay. The arrow keys are going to be the tough part because I don't know which side has the clips when they're so small like that. So. That's going to be a dangerous, risky one. All right. And the shift key, I'm pretty sure, has the metal uh, bar there. So let's actually turn it on its side again. I don't even know if you'll be able to see it. Okay. Yep, there's definitely a metal bar in there, so we'll get this in. Actually, does it have a metal bar on the top as well? It might actually. Okay, just gonna get that one out. We'll work our way down along the edge to pop the metal bar off. Okay, there we go. And I think we have to pop out the top as well. Yeah, there's definitely a metal bar up there, but this paper clips a little bit thick for this I think there we go then we just run our way along the top there we 
go. Popped out both those metal bars. And now we gotta find where the plastic clip is. That explains why it's stuck so bad. Get that in there and pop that out. Pop that out. Oh, this one has two plastic clips. Here we go. Sorry, I don't know if my head got in the way. It probably did, but all right. Wiggle that one. You can see lots of coffee in there with two sets of clips at the bottom. And then it has some clips for the metal bar at the top and the bottom. All right. Also, this hinge design is different than the rest. Take those metal bars out and throw them in the hot water. Well, the water's not even hot anymore. It's just warm. But, uh, here we go. Pop these guys out. Come on. Here we go. This one out, and this one out. Okay, so these little hinges, these hinges are smaller than the other ones. So make sure you know to put them back. Okay, this frame is getting a little bit silver there. Should be okay. All right, we'll take a look, and inside here, coffee-wise, looks fine, so kind of just brush it off, dust it all up. All right. Get the dust and crumbs out of there. Okay, now the one probably all of you guys have been waiting for, the keyboard, because a lot of people break their keyboard keys for some reason. Pretty sure this one has two metal bars going along the top and bottom as well. So it might help to kind of lay it on its side again here. And I don't think you'll be able to see well, but... Once I pop it up, hopefully, or pop it out, hopefully you'll know what's going on. Okay, yep, I see a metal bar there. I'm gonna get the tool in there and push that metal bar out. Rotate it and work our way down to pop the metal bars out. And there we go. Okay, we're gonna go around and do the same thing with the top now. Pull that out. Man, it doesn't help that my fingernail is missing on my index finger. Okay. Go ahead and do the same thing here. Get that in there. Okay, get that in there and pop that metal clip. And once I pop, get it under one metal clip, I just work it all the way down the length of the space bar. Oops. So I just work it down the length of the space bar like this to pop all the, ah, Pop all the metal clips out. There we go. Sorry for that. Okay, then we gotta get this open again and we gotta pop out the plastic clips and I'm pretty sure there's two of them. If not more. Okay, so we'll get there. And pop that out. And there's only two. Alright, we're gonna flip it over this way now. And I gotta be able to see in there. Okay. Basically, I gotta look in there, see the middle of the hinge mechanism, get the tool in there, and then work it to the front of it by rotating it this way. Come on. Might only one clip pop. It's stuck on, oh, it got stuck on those raised clips. There we go. Okay. And now it pops out pretty easily. 
you can see that's what it looks like you can see the coffee all under there and they put these metal bars to make it a bit more stiff okay got the metal bars that are covered with coffee we'll throw that in the water okay then we gotta get this out The space bar kind of has some coffee residue there that it would help to clean it off. So let me get a clean piece of paper towel here. Put some hot or warm water on it. Squeeze out the excess. All right, and then we'll clean this off. Again, it's going to be a little bit deceiving if you don't clean it all off and it's just a little like rehydrated. So you can see that brown stuff. Um, because if the sugar is a little bit wet, then it actually won't leave that stickiness feeling. So you won't know. It has to make sure it's completely dry. So. If it's not clean all the way, um, it'll end up getting sticky again, and then you'll have to work on it again. So this command key actually seems okay. The option key seems okay. The arrow keys, I mean, after I pushed it several times, oops, sorry, then it's kind of okay, but it could be they're okay just because I pressed them, so I'm gonna have to pop those all out. Um, again, like the stickiness, it can feel like it's gone, and then once you let it sit a while, yeah, it comes back. See, it gets all, see, it's all crackly again. So we're going to have to get those out. And it does help for me to work on it sideways like this, but then you guys can't really see that well, I think. Anyways, we're going to pop this guy up. In there. This doesn't have any metal bars, it seems. It's just a bigger clip. I'm trying to unclip it all from this side. There we go. I don't know if my head was in the way. If it was, sorry. Wiggle this. Come on. Oh yeah, there must be some coffee for that to be holding when I try and wiggle it. Okay, come on. And yep, definitely, look at that. Okay, pop this guy out. does help to kind of use a toothbrush to brush it around. Okay, option key. Let's tilt this back up again. Get this in there. Okay. That into the center and pop it. Huh. Why does it not want to pop out? There we go. Let's see if we can work it all the way down and go to the next one. Oops. Did I fling that key? Here we go. <laughs> see here and this one definitely has a lot of coffee in it okay all right now the arrow keys the most difficult ones 
because they're so tiny. All right. We can see the bowl of all the keys. The coffee and those eventually will dissolve and then I just start around. I'll use another clean bowl of water and rinse it out. Um, for the most part, we're almost done. Again, the arrow keys are more tricky. I'm probably going to have to take a look at each one individually. Let's see here. So I'm just going to try and pry underneath and see if I can see underneath here. Okay, the clip mechanism. Oh, okay. So on this one, it actually was able to pop out relatively easy just with my fingernail. When I worked my way over to here, it unclipped. Let's see if this one actually needs to be, come on, let go. I hope it didn't unclip because something broke. Oh, yeah, it wasn't supposed to unclip from that side. It's supposed to unclip from this side. So since this side came up, I'm going to get this in there. And then once I have that in there, I'm going to push it down on top. And that should let me unclip it. Come on. Wow, these clips are holding strong. What the? Okay. Can I wiggle it off? Let's see. I'm going to try getting the tool in that gap here. Nope. Let's use the flathead screwdriver. And try and pop it off. Yeah, it doesn't want to come out. I don't know. This one doesn't look bad, so maybe I should leave it. But I do have to take it out in order to clip it back. So how am I going to do this? How do I get that off? It doesn't want to come out. <laughs> Let's try. Hmm. How is it not popping out? That's crazy. I guess we'll use the that head screwdriver. It's probably the only way. Come on. I don't want to come off. I don't, I can't, I won't be able to push this back on. So I'm not sure how I'm going to do this. Can I, maybe if I lift, maybe if I lift this side enough, I can kind of stretch it over this way. No, it doesn't want to come out. So I don't know, the arrow keys don't want to come out. So I'm not too sure what to do here. I'm going to try putting this here again, and I'm going to try and, lever it so when I push down it should pry up on there so pull it back and there we go those clips are super strong so there you can see the clips this one looks perfectly fine I'm just gonna brush it to get any dust and stuff out okay so this arrow key you do have to put this side the non clip side in first and then clip that down so we'll go over from the left. Oh, it won't even go back on. <laughs> this is going to be tough. How am I going to get it to go back on? Okay, let me fix this a little bit. I bent it down a little. So I guess we have to lift the hinge up. And then while we're lifting the hinge up, slide that on. Is that going to work? Okay, that kind of worked. There we go. And then, yeah, that actually worked. Okay, now we got to figure out these three other keys. Man, these are the most annoying ones. And they're more risky. Like, there's a good chance they'll just break off. Okay, I guess I got to do a close-up look. 
So we'll turn it sideways again, and I'm going to look inside here and try and figure out which side uses the clips. Okay, I think it's the side closer over to... Oops. I think it's the side closer over to here. But again, this one, I'm not sure how I'm going to do that. Let's see if I can lift it up. Can I get this tool to go through to the other side? Okay, I can. Now that I got this to go all the way through, can I pull it over to pop it off? Ouch. I'm going to end up acupuncturing myself. There we go. So I pulled it this way and it unclipped. Can I wiggle this? Did I unclip the wrong side again? <laughs> I did. Okay, so I guess we'll do the same thing as last time. Put the paper clip there. And then we're going to pull down on this to leverage it out. And hopefully the clips don't break. Come on. There we go. And that worked. So here you can see all that coffee in there. All right. Okay, so on this one, oh, I guess on both sides, so the clips are here and the clips are here. So the left and right are actually different keys. You can't interchange, you can't use them interchangeably. Sometimes you can like flip the left one or the up one up, upside down. But on this keyboard, it looks like they don't allow that. Okay, let's see what's going on with the up and down keys then. Pop that up. How do I, it's hard, really hard to see. Okay, so this one, the clips are definitely on the side with the right arrow. What about the upper one? And the upper one, the clips are on the left. Okay. So this one, let's see if I can do it. I'll try again with this method. So the up key, the clips are on the left side, and then the down key is on the clips with the right side. So I'm gonna try and get this under here and see if I can do the method I did last time, but this time, okay, let's try and go from this side, I guess. This time, now that I know which way the clips are going, let's see if it will actually work. Okay, so we'll push this all the way through. And then I'm gonna pull it over to this side. And it's not gonna work, I don't think. Yeah, nope, the clips are way too strong. So, can I get this whole thing underneath? So I'm gonna try and get this bigger section of it underneath. Here we go, and then we'll slide it over. And <laughs> it pops out the other side. Okay, so I guess the only way to get these out is to pop the wrong side out and then use a paper clip in there, hold it in place, and then leverage it down or leverage it up, out. So, come on. I'm scared the key is going to break. There we go. Hopefully it didn't break. Okay, looks good. That's what that looks like. Definitely got some coffee in there. Oh, the water's not warm anymore. I don't know how I'm going to get these little ones out, <laughs> but you can see how they don't um, go the same way, like one clip is going the other way. Okay, so now we've got to get this one out. I guess we're going to do the same thing, just get that in there. And it's probably going to pop the wrong side out again. Let's see if I can somehow pop out the right side only this time. So I'm going to push down on this side and I'm going to pull the paper clip over. And come on. There we go. Okay, now we should be able to wiggle this out. The rest. Or did I pop the wrong side again? Okay, that is the right side. And then this should wiggle out, but there's too much coffee. There we go. 
All right, so there we go. We were able to get that out the right way. The less risky way. Okay, now we gotta get those out. Man, this thing I bent it all up. Okay, so this one, how do these pop out? Okay, so these you gotta pop out this side with the smaller thing. So let's see here. But it looks like it's gonna be very difficult because they're so small. So I don't know if it's gonna work. Let's try. Okay, so it might be easier to separate the clips, but let's see, can it can it flex enough for me to push this out? Oh it does, okay. Okay, not bad. There we go. And then make sure these go the right way when you put it back. Make sure you don't put it upside down. You can tell it's upside down because the bottom of it has like little letters and writing on it and the top is like all smooth, okay? All right, so again, you wanna go from the side with this clips, not from this. Like you can tell by looking at it, the smaller, I'll call it like the hammerhead side, okay? So we'll go in there and pop that up. There we go, perfect. And then this one has a little part that slides in, this hook, so you just gotta slide it out of there. Okay, then the last of them, for the last one. And then we just gotta reassemble, put all the keys back in. Okay. There we go. Okay, I'm surprised. It, oh, okay. So that's what I was saying. Like this one can pop out. So yeah, so it goes is this the right way, it goes this way. Oh no, I need one of the other ones to see. <laughs> Okay, so if that's going that way, then this one goes this way, right? And the hammerhead, okay. So if you accidentally break one of these small ones apart, you can actually see this one has a little groove in there, and that's where the hammerhead end goes. Okay, and then this, we have to kind of flex, oops. So the hammerhead end goes in there, and then this we have to flex outwards to get those little clips back in. There we go. And I'm surprised none of these plastic pieces broke. So that's good. All right. Sometimes this kind of thing is very risky, and then those little clips end up all breaking off. But in this case, somehow all of them survived. I'm impressed. Okay, we're going to brush this up a bit. And we probably need to use a little bit of water to try and clean that. Okay, it doesn't look too bad in here actually after removing the keys. So it looks like most of the coffee just dried up and clung to the keys and the hinge mechanisms. So, yeah. Okay, there we go. All right, so I'm gonna finish rinsing these off. I'm gonna drain off the water, use some new clean water cause it's getting murky again. And then um, maybe do that twice to make sure the keys are all clean. Again, using warm water. And then we will snap all of them back in. All right, so I'll see you guys then. All right, so I'm back, rinsed it off multiple times. Here you go, we got the clean keys. I'm just gonna pour them all in my lap in a towel and dry them off. Okay, you kind of don't really need to see this part, so I'm going to dry them all, and then I'll be back. <laughs> Alright, so I'm back. Let's get all these clips and everything into place. We have quite a few. Um, Alright, so first thing I'm going to do is put back all the little hinges over here. Okay, so these, if I'm right, go this way. So the way I would put it back is I would hook on the... The little hooks first. Let me actually zoom into one so you can see. So I would hook these on first. Okay. Again, make sure you have them the right side up. So hook that on. Get that lined up. Hook it on. And then click this down. All right. So this can be a little bit difficult, but you do have to kind of pull it over like that. Okay. We got a whole bunch of these. So we're just going to click all of these in. 
Um, I don't think you can do it the other way. So if you try and do it this way first, see, I don't think you can push it on. So you want to, oops, I accidentally popped the little thing out. So I gotta make sure to pop that back in. Does it let me do it diagonal in here? Huh. Okay, I accidentally popped one of these out. Let me see if there's a, does it go into that slot? Easily. Oh yeah, so you can actually slide it um, over to this. There's a little gap or hole there, so you can slide it over to that, and then I think you can yeah push that in. Okay, so these little holes on the center, they actually help you get the little pegs in. Okay, so we're gonna get this one in. I think I'm just gonna zoom out more and then just show all of these. Um, this can be a little bit of a trick, okay? So, we've got a lot of these to go. Okay. Okay, and then pull it slightly. Again, when I'm clipping those bottom, those clips in, I'm sliding it towards myself. Okay, let's actually start putting some of the things in real quick. So we're going to go up here. And clip those in. There's a lot of these. Hopefully I didn't ac accidentally knock any anywhere and then lose them. Oops. Okay, I'm doing the top row now. Okay. So let's do the function row first since we already got those in. Okay, so we got those clips in. All right, so we got F9 key. Again, you want to start at the top corners, make sure it falls into place. And then once that falls in, you can click that in. And there we go. It's good. All right. We got the F10 here. Click that in. Good. And F11. There we go. Perfect. All right. Then we got the number rows. Let's actually start getting all those clips in. Okay. Click that in. Oop, come on. There we go. And there we go. Okay, we got all these keys over here, so I gotta be careful. There's a lot of keys. Go, okay. Get in there. this key slightly smaller okay we'll leave that one out for now all right so we can get the seven click that in eight all right let's get the where's the nine? Oh, nine. Zero. all right um I'm going to need to see a keyboard because I get confused on some of these. So let me take a look at another keyboard real quick. Okay, then you got the negative and then the plus. <coughs> Jeez. Okay, so we've got the minus ones here. And we got the one with the plus on it. Where is it? Here we go. Get that one. Oh, I forgot. I need to get that plastic clip back in. Okay, let's get another one of these clips. Get in there. 
Why is this one so... Okay, there we go. I don't know why that one was being so difficult, but there we go. Okay. Alright, feels good. Hopefully all the keys electronically work, because... Okay, so we're going to put the T now, because... If not, I'm going to be in trouble. Then we'd have to replace the whole keyboard. Okay, so we got the T. Alright, next we get the Y. Make sure they all clip in okay. Alright, Y. Alright, we're getting all of them in. Let me... Only put the wrong ones in and then end up having to do it all again so pop them out so okay you click that in oh I dropped one of the hinges come back here okay okay Next one. Come on, get on there. Alright, got the P. Okay, now we got the square bracket. Where's the other one? Here we go. Get that square bracket. Come on. There we go. Next square bracket. Okay. Get that guy in there. Okay. What's next? We've got that slash thingy. these F key. Oh, I already put all the little hinges, so let's get this in. Come on, where'd you go? There we go. Okay, so we got the F. Okay, we got the G. The H. J. Where is it? Okay. J. Got the K. Oops. Okay, I'll get this clip in. Just about done with this whole thing. Okay. Okay, where's the colon semicolons? Okay, then we got the. 
there's the apostrophe. Here we go. Quotations and apostrophe. All right, let's go ahead and continue down here. Come on, get in there. Here we go. Okay, C. The next one. V. B. Next one. Let's get more of these little clips in there. Okay, and M. Period one. Come on. Come on, we're getting there. Let's see the other one. Where are we going? There we go. Okay, and then the question mark. Got the option key. Okay, good. And we got the command key. Let's see, we've got a lot of these little keys, so I need to make sure I'm not mixing anything up. Because these ones are very similar in size. Okay. Okay, I think these are for the space bar. Could be wrong. These look about the same. Then you got these. Okay, so bigger, slightly bigger, smaller, shorter. Let's see. Okay, so we've got these small ones that are matching, the two matching small ones. I think go for the shift key. So we'll get that in. Okay. Okay, and the shift key has these two metal bracket thingies, so one goes at the top and one goes at the bottom, so we get those in. So they go in from the top, there's a hole um, in that little bracket that holds them, okay, and then after you get it in the top you can slide it over, so slide that up there, get this one over, and slide that one there, okay. So we need the shift key. <clears throat> All right. So we'll go ahead and snap this in just like this. And then snap the bottom in. And hopefully it's all going to snap in. OK, perfect. OK, there we go. There's some little, it doesn't look that nice there, but OK. What's next? We got. 
four other keys. So the smallest or the shortest one, okay, I don't know if you can see, there's three. The shortest one will go to the command key, it looks like. At least I'm just going based on the size of the area for that to go in. And so hopefully I'm picking the right one. Nope, that's the wrong one. So this one is too short. So that means the command key uses this long or tallest one. I hope that's right. Okay. So get that in there and then pull that in. Looks good. All right. Command key in. Click it. Perfect. Okay, now we got these two. So I'm assuming the skinnier one goes for the delete key here. Okay, could be wrong, but looks like it's good. Okay, good. Pull that in. All right, so these keys have, this one has a little metal bracket that goes in here. It slides in and then it lays up there. Okay, for the delete key. Alright. Yeah. Hmm. Actually. Okay. Actually, this bracket goes down, not up. So it faces down this way. Okay. Just like that. Try to get it centered. Alright. Then we will get this lined up. Get the top in first. Get it in place and click it all in. Perfect. Okay, then we got the return key one here. Get that lined up. Perfect. Click that in. Okay, return key has one metal bracket as well that also goes to the bottom. So I'll get this in there towards the bottom. Oops, come on. There we go. Line it up. Okay, try and get it centered. All right, then get the top in, kind of wiggle it, click that all into place, and there we go. Perfect. All right, we've got the little arrow keys on the space bar. Let's actually do the space bar first. So the space bar has two. It's a little tricky to line this up, but there we go. Click that in. Then we got this one. Same thing. Click that in. Okay, it has two metal bars. Okay, get it in. And slide it all the way up. And get the middle one in here. And slide it down. Okay, space bar. Make sure that you have it facing the right way. Um, the way you can tell is this one has little hooks on the top, All right? Okay. And then you have the little clips here and the clips always go towards the bottom here. So we're going to get the top of this in first and then we'll clip the bottom in. Perfect. There you go. Okay. Now the arrow keys can be a little tricky because they look similar, but okay. The hinge mechanisms are basically the same. It's just they're facing a different direction. So just make sure you get the right one in the right spot. You can see where it has this big hole. It goes where that um, little hinge catches it. So hook it on there first, and then you can click this down. All right, there we go. Okay. Then we have the up arrow key and the down arrow key. So make sure you get the right one. So the little clips want to go towards this, um, the hammerhead. So that way I know the clips are there. We're going to have it going there. Okay, so I'm going to hook on this side first. Um, this one can be a little tricky to hook it on. You do kind of have to raise it up a little bit to get it in there, it looks like. Okay, so let me see. I might have to lift up from the hammerhead side first. And then we slide this on, okay? And then we can go ahead and clip that down. Perfect. All right, let's get the other one in. Clip that in, clip that in. 
Okay, same thing. We're going to have to lift the hammerhead side up. And then we can go ahead and slide this over. There we go. And then click that in. Perfect. Look at that. So much better. All right, and the last one, same thing. Slide that over, hook it on, click that into place, and make sure it points to the left. Same thing, we're going to lift up the hammerhead side, slide this over, get that latched in, and then click it on, and we're good. All right, and then obviously you want to check the keyboard, it looks like all of it's working, so we should be good to go. And that's pretty much it. Hopefully this video helped you guys out. If it did, again, please make sure to like, subscribe, share my channel with others so that they can learn how to upgrade and repair their devices as well. Leave a comment because YouTube likes to see that. And if it helped you save a bunch of money, please consider contributing a little to the channel. A little bit, like every little bit helps and allows me to continue making these videos for a living. This video did take a long time to make. Hopefully it did help a lot of you guys out there. Um, the ways you can contribute are in the description below. And yeah, I'll see you all in the next one. Let's drop this spike.